is that supposed to mean, Eagle? Nonsense. It's great to see. Hey, Eagle. Hi, Pecan. Welcome. Hello, Seiko. My favorite cuties. Did you get some oranges, or...? <laughs> Isn't that a... Is that a brand, or is that a type of orange? I wouldn't be shocked if it was a brand. But also, I wouldn't be shocked if it was a type. Or perhaps I've been led astray all along. Aren't you glad you streamed today? Oh, there's something funny. You did it. Well, let's see. We gotta find out. Cutie oranges. Yeah, it's a brand. <laughs> They're just small oranges. That's it. A brand of clementines. California Clementines. <clears throat> I wish I liked oranges. I don't know why I don't. Are they good though? As I just mentioned, you're asking the wrong person. But yeah, if, if I had to pick an orange, I'd probably eat that one. Not that good for the stomach. Mikey is apparently abhorred by me saying that I don't like oranges that much. Like, I like orange flavor. I like oranges in stuff. I would not just eat a straight up orange. I'd say I like orange chicken, but that's basically admitting that I like chicken covered in sugar, which is not shocking. But... Artificial? No! Put oranges in stuff! Make orange zest in stuff! Not... Jesus. <laughs> if a salad has orange... slices in it, I'll eat it. I'm not like, damn, I could do it with an orange right now! Give me an orange! I'm gonna eat this orange straight up! I don't like orange juice. I like oranges more than orange juice. But I like... Let me buy juice oranges. The others taste like rind to me. Damn. Yeah, but I like... I like orange flavor. Not artificial! I just don't like oranges. Like, straight up stuff an orange in my mouth. You like grape juice. Is it inherently wrong to like grape juice? In a soup local supermarket, there is a machine with oranges where you can get your orange juice freshly pressed. Okay, I'd be willing to try that orange juice. That sounds, that sounds pretty good. Peel it first. Oh! Oh my God! Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't like how waxy it is when you bite into it. <laughs> Do you guys eat your orange with or without the wrapper? Yeah, and like. I'm allergic to like bananas. Like whenever I eat them, I get like sick. It, like, I, I love the waxy outer container, but like, <laughs> yes, I know how to eat fruit. Thank you. Wait.
Which do you trust more? A fruit or vegetable that you have to, like, peel the outside of to eat? Or ones that you can eat the outside of? Like, I know the outside of those things often have, like, a lot of nutritional value. And perhaps this is me being a bit American. It's, it's, it's a little gross. If you really think about it. It's a good old times. Hey, okay, welcome. Of an orange? Of any fruit or vegetable. Any of them. And there's a lot of good flavor. In, or, unironically, if you're not zesting your oranges, they don't do that for fun. Lemon and orange zest. Lime zest. Zest, zest your fruits, people. Anyway. And I announced today, I didn't forget. I trust peelers more. Eat them with the peel flake. No one gets it. It reminds me of a sad story. Sorry for the wall. What? <laughs> when my dad was a baby, his siblings were really mean to him, and my grandma would always leave chicken breast chicken for him. Leave chicken breast for him. But he used to say he didn't like it, but it was only because when grandma went to work, older siblings would eat the chicken breast and give him the breast bone. And then my dad says he is traumatized. Oh no. Yeah, Mikey. Just like your dad for... <laughs> I feel like I'm traumatizing Mikey with that joke. Where I'm just like blank for real. <laughs> Don't! Are you traumatized? No, I think it's funny. Oh, like in general, am I traumatized by something? Uh, I mean, probably. Statistically? Mega Mind is incorrect. Mega Man is the correct game. Is it hyphened? No, it's just a space. You're not like my father. <laughs> or I'm like your father. I can't do a Darth Vader impression. I, I have a mask. Can we put the mask on? Just kidding, I won't do it. I, I don't- I haven't worn that since I was like... 12? And I'm so nervous, like, it's gonna pull out all of my hair if I try to put the damn thing on. We cannot see you. That's correct, I'm currently wearing it. <laughs> I wear it on stream at all times to protect my identity. He saw right through me. Let's try one. This is too old for Metacritic. Is this like, uh... Contra? Nope. DOS, Amiga, Atari, Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, and Amstrad CPC. <clears throat> with, the, with the flesh wall. This looks like a UI element. Got like a little dude. And some some bullet. It's the right finds mask instantly. Yeah. It's right here. Oh, hold on. I was gonna do this. I'm gonna have some short bread. Some bread that's short. Bomb man? Like bomber man or bomb man? Bomber man max? Is that dookie nookie? No. The fuck?
Lojo. Hello, Nemo. Enjoy your lurk. Hmm. Nah, man. Rick Dangerous. Rick Dangerous 2. Thanks, Rick. This looks rad. <laughs> I told you it was Duke Nukem. <laughs> you really did Dukey Nukey. <laughs> I mean, short bro. Okay. How short is the bread? Mikey doesn't know what shortbread is. But this is Wordle. Something she does know for today. February 15th, 2024. Stop Please just alt tab and listen to it. concept that's say weird well first of all uh, I hope this explains something it's British uh, it's a British dessert and it is uh, a kind of yeah dessert as mentioned let's see short bread the kind of cookie Lux. Something. Ignore that. <laughs> like this. Ta -da. I hope that helps. I'd eat. Yeah, it's good. It's, um... I wouldn't call it bread, though. Yeah, I don't know why it's called shortbread. Uh, maybe it has to do with the recipe. Let's take a look, shall we? Oh, you know, it might be because of shortening. That could be why it's called shortbread, because it could involve shortening. It's a biscuit, biscuit, isn't it? Is that a word? Oh, what you just suggested? Yeah, but I want, I want to have this letter in it. This letter must be present. Oh yeah, it's basically buttery cookie. Yeah. Mm. 
enjoy. Oh, I'm already done. It, it was two little cookies. Do not enjoy. It's too late. I already did. You cannot... <laughs> you cannot chain me. not bad especially since it's the answer well done hi the Dominican Republic or Jersey for the record I know that Jersey is an island off of the UK what is that uh you ever see Fred from uh the uh Scooby-Doo show you know how he's got that little tough thing in his in his shirt? I hate that person. Well, he wears one of those. <laughs> it's that little thing that's uh, in his shirt. Not his shirt, but like near his neck. I'm basically giving away the word without saying it right now. But anyway. Sorry to like the one person who still plays Wordle and hasn't played it since I started playing it today and also is listening. That one, I wouldn't even say it's half a person. As someone who meets that criteria, who has already done something. And so that it isn't actually a problem, but it was close. Who is that? No one in chat. Anyway. Um. <laughs> <clears throat> jo Jersey or Dominican Republic and Jersey does not have that kind of accent <laughs> pretty much guaranteed Where the first one was Jersey 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 the island that is off of the UK I know that one it's like around here hopefully the UK isn't involved in this I'll make it easy well it's not Famous. Covadis? Oh, this is a problem. Does this make this Portugal? The fact that he's like I'm having a stroke, I'm trying to. I don't know where the fuck I am. You got this though. Pretty cool. What did the bus say? El Josa. Not El Jojo. <laughs> Coffee. Jaffels. King Vak Jun. Oh. Sour Cooking Spear School. El Barto. Wait a minute, what's that say? This may be exactly the hint that we need. I'm driving away from the famous place. Let's, let's go up here. Near the El Jojo bus. Was that, was that guy wearing like diamond armor? Jeez, look at that dude. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's a high visibility suit. <laughs> Koken means P. 
penis in Swedish? Like, atomically or like slang? Minecraft cosplayer. Slang. Excellent. Good. This is such a strange spot. Is this just like the entrance to a park or something? Because it feels like you can just drive right past this. You know? This looks cool. I check out the adventure zone. Okay. Uh, what would I want to jump? I can't skip FAMOOS. He just said it perfectly, reading that sign that did not say Kukin. The Kukin. Nuryani, aha! Jaye! Yippee Jaye! Um... This uh. frozen food. That's all you need, though. The only problem we have is that Indonesia is fucking huge. Focus Optima. Just focus. Boba tea. How about the Sindo Mungu? Or the bangy one? Yo, I need, I need to this. I need this. What the hell? Now let me stop here at the uh, Aloha Fresh. All right. No. Yes. That'll do. Colas. It's like a... What is this? Oh. It suddenly became very green. Uh, Croatia? Agriculture. Well, yes! <laughs> but I feel like, where are they growing? You know? What was it? This is Coca-Cola headquarters. Hey, I doubt it. Have you ever seen a real cow? Like, up close? Because... Yes, regardless. And many times. I think I even milked one. That would have been a long time ago. Texas, I forgot. <laughs> there used to be a farm near me. Like... Triple caution, Sammy! Triple caution! Gosh. When I was younger, and it got replaced. It was like a family-owned farm, and I, I live in suburbia, people. Alright. Here's the A5. Where can I find the A1? It's in the fridge there, son, but if you need A1 for your steak, it ain't good steak. There's a, there's an Americanism for you. Or Texasism, really. <clears throat> if you need sauce for your barbecue, it ain't real barbecue, son. There we go. I'll do. That's either the A11? Yeah, it was. 
Tschüss. The Netherland? There's no way. Is it really called Nederland? No. No. No, you're lying. Yes. Yes. This does this does not help you, Nemo. This does not help your language's case. No, we do not speak English with a funny accent. Oh, where do you live? In the Netherlands? <laughs> This helps. Gratis. Oh man, I'm, I'm, Nemo's about to cringe. Nemo's about to implode. Gratis integesprick in gesund kick. Yes. Wonderful. Unik in Nederland. What do you think that means? Holy shit. Yeah, see? Implosion. Uh, info at personal fitnessatin. <laughs> personal fitness altin. Telefoon. <laughs> You're having a problem. <laughs> Free intake talk and health check. Telefoon. Mental coaching. Voting. <laughs> now I just want to bother Nemo and just read Dutch. Sony. Sony Strunks! <laughs> Belgic hit in Zwan Binwelk. Tis broken theory in the lifestyle. Optic and Hurzurg. <laughs> hey, German. Oh, shit. Good enough. Malta. Where have we gone? <laughs> Malta. Lisboa Norte. Montillo. Pinhal Novo. Setubal. I'll think about it. Music. A twelve. What? What? Oi. Just be shuffling. Mojito? I'll have a mojito. <laughs> up here. No? Lisbon. <laughs> it's about to get Real American. Portugal? Oh. It doesn't say Lisbon, does it? And the street signs don't line up. They don't have the E1 and the EU990. I 
and Croatia does. It'll be fine. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't see Lisa, but... I kinda want that direction marker. I'm going this way. Waterwold Reservat. As the goofy language. And it looks like this. I don't think this is Nemo's backyard. North Sun. Indeed. Okay. Is this supposed to be an internet domain? Are we sure? Science Museum! Is it weird that English doesn't use double A's? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I say that. It's one of these two. I can't move. Alright, where does, like, the Witcher castle... ...come from? Cool building then, Nemo. Also a cool person. That is not a Chinese flag. That is not an option. <laughs> Do not try to trick me. Yeah, like I did before. What? It was a joysy! It's off of France! I thought it was... I mean, it is south of England, but I thought it was off of England. I thought it was like this. Damn it, Jersey. It's fine. Okay, thank God. We, we got an easy one. Remember the Jersey horse. The Jersey horse? They're gonna keep offering that large country I'm never gonna pick, huh? I don't know why the Chinese flag would be here in Jersey. Anyway. Who's ready for time travel shenanigans? Alright. Who, who needs a catch-up? Who needs to know why we're going to Solitary Cell 13? Me. What's the last thing you understood? Maybe don't catch me up. 
What's the last thing you understood? We're going to do this because it helps me remember everything. I couldn't explain it. You know what that means? Everything after baby Trucy is a blur. Oh god, I'm gonna go for this. Salvaris. Hi. Back to the past. The Sigma is the Oi Josuke case. And it's time. <clears throat> In the present, Apollo Justice just went through a case where it was discovered that uh, Drew Misham died from poisoning. Okay. You with me so far? Drew Misham happened to be making paintings. I can't show the evidence because we already did this case, but it's highly important to this one. So, these paintings, however, were fakes of famous paintings that happened to be drawn over Apollo's previous cases, such as the Josuke case. Kind of creepy. Turns out, uh, this man who makes fakes uh, is not the one who actually makes fakes. Age 15. We're in the past. We're gonna get there. <laughs> the one who makes fakes is, is his daughter. And she's been posing as him for him to make some money. And he was poisoned using a stamp that was intended to kill him. And she, like, diffused that. She's like, whatever. And, like, put it in a fucking uh, frame. And then one day he's like, oh, I need a stamp. I'm going to use this one. It was poisoned. He died. So she got off, right? But now we've gone back in time. As it turns out, uh, they made a fake in the case where Phoenix Wright <laughs> was defending uh, <laughs> Trucy's dad. Are you with me so far? <laughs> and we only get deeper. Are you with me so far? <laughs> Are you with me so far? We only get deeper. <laughs> Where this dad uh, was going to inherit a Magnifique Grimaire's um magic axe and he's on his deathbed in the hospital with a tumor for three months he's gonna he's gonna die in three months of cancer he gets shot in the head this man this i have actually evidence for so i can i can show a visual representation now this freak <laughs> sends mail to his two apprentices trucy's dad zach grammaire and Trucy's quote unquote uncle, Valent Grammaire, who are both his apprentice. They both receive mail. Uh, Zach gets, hey, meet me at 1105 and shoot me in the forehead. You must shoot the forehead. And then Valent also gets an email, uh, a mail saying, come at 1120 and shoot the forehead. And for the best case for our client, he showed up and shot the clown. You can see the clown got shot in the head over here. That, that, that's our, that was our line that, oh yeah, Zack showed up, shot the clown, and the Valen showed up and shot the, the master. And we had a whole debacle about how you could tell when he died and who messed with what to prove otherwise. The important thing to know is that when they were cornered, the uh, prosecutor, who was uh, the, the Gavin, that is not this one. This is Gavin's brother. The guy who's been fucking with Apollo all game. With the, with the German accent. Um, goes, we got a diary. And if you look at it, uh, it cuts off uh, right when it says that uh, he's going to walk in. 
So Zach definitely shot him. And we go, oh yeah? Yeah, also I can present forged evidence in the court. It was set up. It went, oh yeah, check out this diary. And he went, oh yeah, well, I ended up with this. And uh, he goes, gotcha, Phoenix. And he brings in Drew Misham to be like, yeah, I made that. That's fake. That's fake evidence. You just presented fake evidence, bro. And Phoenix is like, wait, what? And he gets disbarred. Are you with me so far? We are going to continue. There is more. <laughs> there is more information. <laughs> so, after being disbarred, uh, Zach goes, Hey. Good news. They can't say I'm guilty. And Phoenix is like, what the hell are you talking about? And this guy vanishes. Like, literally runs out the door. Is gone. The Gavins aren't twins. No. They're, they're siblings. So, I think he's the older one. Kristoff here. Anyway. Zack just disappears and leaves Trucy behind. And Phoenix is like, hey, you want to hang out at my place till we find where you can go? And eventually you adopt. You adopt them. They have the same sprite. Siblings look alike. <laughs> so, uh, she helped him escape from uh, Mike Meekins. Perhaps you may recognize him from a previous game. But, uh, ga gave him the old wraparound with Mr. Hattie or whatever, right? So, that sucks. But, What we have to do now is a handful of things. Here in the past, we can gather information about who and why the forging was done. And in the present, we're getting information about what happened the last few days. Where it turns out, remember the very first case where that guy showed up and got shot? That's Zach Grimaire. He vanished and showed back up and said, Hey, Phoenix, you want to play another game of cards, buddy? Come on! And I don't know why. Yeah, there you go. Sego's got the clip of the realization. I don't know why he showed back up trying to fuck over the last thing Phoenix had. He's like, yeah, I'm pretty good at playing cards. Seems like a foot taller than your twin. I mean, if you aren't perfectly identical, yeah. There, there are twins that aren't identical. And basically, we're back to, um... Trying to get people to talk. The Magimata. Let's see if we can do this. I don't know what he needs. I need to run around seeing what people need to start with. No, let's hear it then. What are you hiding from me, Mr. Misham? I'm sorry, but I don't know. I never met the client. True. I asked the client's name. There were no Cyclops in sight. Regardless, you're hiding something. You have to be. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense. Uh, why are you doing this to me? Oh, I made my stand. I'm backing down now. So, what's Misham hiding? I think it'd be the sample, because we already know the forger. Yes, there was a reference. Why should I hide that? Uh, after the trial, I submitted everything to the court. My work, the sample page, everything. Whoopsie! We don't know the forger, this is seven years ago. Yeah, but I know it, so I don't care. And give me directions to the court if you like. That, that, that's fine. I, I know where the court is. Ow. <laughs> Unless you were just trying to get me to leave. Ah, uh, sorry. I could sometimes be a little blunt. <laughs> oh, hey. Who's the forger? I can pretty much piece together what it is from what you've said. 
What, what is it then? You told me what you knew about the client, and I couldn't see any psych locks. Psych locks? Is that some sort of asylum security? Or new hairstyle, perhaps? <laughs> but then they did show up, didn't they? Who was your client? I, I said in court, I do not know. Really? It was such a suspicious request? If it was me, I'd want to know as much as I could about the requester. I never met them. Not personally, I... I, I not personally. Those were stricken psych locks. I'll go with the psycho locks, and I must really know what they are. <laughs> so you didn't meet the client? Hmm? I had to blow my nose. <laughs> this idiot paints in a $400 outfit, and he looks amazing. Yeah, he, like, <laughs> painted his Gucci suit. But someone else did. Maybe the real forger behind this evidence? Perhaps I'm hung up on this lock business, but I'm afraid you've lost me. Yeah, well, I didn't come here to talk about Cyclops. This doesn't come to the right conclusion, doesn't matter how I got there. And your conclusion is? The real forger behind this wasn't you, Mr. Misham. Probably Clark. I don't know what you're talking about. That's my work, I tell you. Made here in my studio. Who's could have been me? That's the real question, isn't it? If the forger wasn't you, <laughs> then I don't have any other people to choose from. The real forger, a true studio, is your daughter. The real forger is your daughter, Vera Misham, isn't it? Ridiculous. My daughter's only 12 years old, Mr. Wright. I've been more one. I've been, I've been more one for landscapes, not surrealism. It's come back. You're shaking in your boots. Got you now, you stupid. Bitch. <laughs> the only two people who are access to the studio are you and your daughter. The, the Cyclops tell me you're not a forger, which makes your daughter the only possibility. Um, I've been very much on the verge of going psycho lock myself. <laughs> I don't know how you knew, but you're right. The one who made this page. Was my daughter Vera, not I. She's only twelve, a genius you might call her. A precious little girl outshining her father. It's been a lot of that going around recently. I did play in the studio, and she watched me. She taught herself in that way, drafting tools and the analytical devices about when they became necessary. They're my little girl's play things now. Huh, do I detect a bit of fatherly pride? Vera was the one who made this page. Would she know who the client was then? Actually, the client came once. Yeah, to the studio. What? Why did you say so, so sooner? But if I discovered, they don't want to talk to me. So, they talked to your daughter? I will speak only with the artist, the client told me. The little girl is the key to our mystery client's true identity. Okay, what do I do now? Maybe I should talk to her father a bit more? Or is it time to turn my attention to Vera? Yeah, we're, we're, talk we're talking to Vera. Miss Mister, I have a request. Let me guess. You'd like to speak with my daughter? Can I? My daughter has never been one to talk to strangers. She's quite shy. Extremely so, actually. But only one exception. Which was... Oddly enough, it was that client. I left the studio while they talked. I returned when they had finished, and she was laughing. It was the first time I'd see anything of the sort. Please, let me speak with her. All right. Uh oh, this could be tough. Oh. It could be. Oh, uh, what do you think about this? It's magic. I think I just made her nervous. I need something to grab her attention. Hey, what do you think about this? It, it has a photo of that other magician that you like. Okay. Alright, for her we need... Magician. We need magic. And I, I'm not even gonna... Show the Zack profile. You can't do that in this game. That's not a thing.
All right. <laughs> Get ready. Here comes solitary confinement. For the fava beans. You only do it in court. They only do it on certain questions. Well, well, isn't it an unexpected surprise? What errand brings you down to my cramped confines? Gavin. Is your idea of revenge, Phoenix Fright? Revenge for the events that took away our Tony's badge seven years ago? Masses look by logic. Strange truth. Nothing's changed. All I do is point the finger of justice in the proper direction. Fine, fine. I'm going to have this little tete tete head right away. You look well, Phoenix, right? You too, Gavin. Life has been full of surprises for both of us. I have no doubt you never expected to lose that attorney's badge of yours. And I bet you never expected to wind up here. Shady Smith was the name of the man you killed. Did you know who he really was? Who he was? Zach Grammaire. You know, the defendant. I remembered him, of course. Would you say Smith was Zack? Impossible. Don't even try to tell me it was a coincidence. What did I just say? Life is full of surprises. Don't you think? At the trial, you were arrested and found guilty, but your motive was never made clear. A mistake I planned to remedy. I'm not an attorney anymore, Phoenix Wright. What possible conclusion do you think this investigation of yours can lead to? I killed a man named Smith with a bottle because I'm an evil human being. Isn't that enough? Not for me, it isn't. Slim Shady. No. <laughs> I don't know why you did it, Gavin. Gavin! You recall that case seven years ago? Ah, yes. The trial where Zach Romare pulled his famous vanishing act. My brother won his fair share of praise and adoration for the trial, as I recall. Genius prosecutor of Reels, crooked attorney, was it? That's when I met you, wasn't it? Was it now? Our association review board voted unanimously for the strictest punishment. Unanimous, save for one dissenting opinion. Yours. It was my brother who was responsible for putting you in that position, after all. For seven years we've been friends. And yet, I still don't understand you. But right, your friendship toward me was never pure. You suspected me then, and you still do now, don't you? Honestly, right now, I'm not sure what I think. You didn't just brain a guy with a juice bottle for no reason. Tell me why you did it. Oh yeah, it's juice, not wine, by the way, totally. Uh, persistent, aren't you? I came here, because I remembered something. The night of our game. Zach Grammaire mentioned your name, Gavin. Gavin. Oh, that's right, room. I saw familiar faces in this restaurant. He did not seem to notice me, however. Gavin, I believe is his name. After that, he was killed. And I asked you to help me. Because I remembered your kindness back when everyone had turned on me. I seemed to be in a bit of trouble. Something like that? Dead. Someone hit him. Hard, hard. Me? Please. Cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Eh? Should it come to that? Man? I have to know. Why did you kill Shady Smith? No, Zach Grammaire. Oh my god, are you serious? <laughs> he has special ones too. <laughs> he has special Cyclops. Okay. Dark, cold, full of despair. Can you even unlock these things? Something wrong, right? No, it's nothing. You shouldn't push yourself so hard. Life is to be taken easy, you know. Oh. Huh? He's doing his nails. Guys, he's doing his nails. Guys. 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 <laughs> Guys. He's doing his nails. 
Alright, it's black. Oh, no. Zach and Chris went together to the forge the evidence. Maybe. No, I'll press him now. Alright, let's go. I have to know more about this power of Trucy's. It's like she can see right into people's minds. First time I saw her do it, it blew mine. After you're done, have your mind blow, you took it to play card with you. Yeah, gotta use the resources at hand, I always say. Is this some kind of ghost trick? <laughs> Yet I myself have no such power. But Trucy does. Why is that? Maybe Trucy got her power from her mother? They should go there. I'll not speak of that. Unless he was officially missing, correct? And I think I know why you don't want to talk about her. Oh? Oh, do we? I don't think we do. I mean, I have no evidence right now to pull this off. Maybe it's time to do a little more legwork. Chris Pearl had to kill him so he wouldn't tell you about him assisting the forging so he could lose against Gavin. Gavin? She has amnesia. Sh she's missing. By the way, how many people go missing in these games? Was it Maya's mom missing too, quote unquote? Well, I might have seen my pants on this one. There must be a path leading from the evidence to the truth. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to find. Pretty well that Phoenix, Dispart, Kartrick, has been the most stable adult in Trucy's life. Well, I mean, it isn't like he did anything wrong. He's just kind of playing a character at this point. Because he's kind of, like, he's just ironic, as much as I, it pains me to make this pun by accident. He's playing the cards he was dealt with. You know? Like, oh yeah, Dispart Attorney, Phoenix Wright, that's me, and he's just like running around doing this shit in the back, you know? Ask someone to take a life. Even one not long for this world. That's asking someone to commit murder. Yes, our mentor is fond of dramatic moves, dramatic finales. And he got this wish. His life was taken. What weakness could be so powerful as coerce someone to committing murder? When is this? This is seven years ago. I guess it was a matter of life or death. Shady is alive in the present, and Kristoff is in prison in the past. We're currently in the past. Can you explain? Your troop lives in the world of showmanship. The flashier, the better. And flashy often means danger, doesn't it? Let's make this as painless as possible. If you have proof of this danger, then show it. You mean like a gun? I don't have proof of this danger. Use prosecute. What? Actually, you got it all wrong. What? No, look. <laughs> Here is... Oh! You said Kristoff. Yeah, Kristoff is in prison. Uh, this is the present, but like slightly the past. And then this is the present, the present. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I, I misunderstood who Kristoff was. I apologize. I thought you were referring to the person I was actively talking to. Weird. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Let's see what happens when I press the, like, evil locks. Oh, I can't. Fascinating. Hmm. 
Okay, I think it's better to say current year. Seven years ago. Does that make sense? But it's weird. Mr. Zach, could you tell me about this? It's alright. We meet for the first time in seven years and you offer me this, please. It was it a present? This guy's a hard sell. I won't get a rise out of him unless I show him something real interesting. Zach, could you tell me about this? I remember for seven years or this woman's Trucy's mother, yes? She said her mother was gone. Yeah, so it is. What more is there to say? It's Grimaire. Magnifica Grimaire's only daughter. And together, more evidence, clearly. As he transfers evidence everywhere. It's all knowledge he's ever accumulated. If events in the present present in the present present game, events can't use them in the present past because you don't have it. But I do, obviously. Hey, Trucy, see this? I'm sorry. Huh? I'm still just training to be a magician. I can't make things disappear yet. What? I have one more year. I'll be able to make it disappear then. I'm sure to be careful when showing evidence to magicians in the future. Trucy, how about this locket? Oh, that's my mommy. Is it mommy pretty? Wait. You don't want to know more about mommy, do you, Daddy? I I do actually. I better keep an eye on you, Daddy. Oh, that's not how I meant it. Honest. He's beautiful, though. Something more. Poise. That's it. She's got poise. She's poised. What the fuck? <laughs> she has high poise. Yeah. Hmm. What does poise mean? Like, uh, you know. Uh, presence? Standing upright? Here, let's- let's get real! Hold on. Graceful and elegant bearing in a person. Balance. Be or cause to be balanced or suspended. As a verb. That's archaic though, the balance. Her poise meter is at max. She's wearing heavy armor. Yeah. <laughs> oh damn, Eagle is late to sing Hello the Dragon. These are for being stunned. So I need to show her something. Hey, check it out, I got a dead body! Um, what do you think about this? Oh. <laughs> show you a gun? Oh. Maybe I'll just slide over here for a closer look. That's awfully small frame. What's that inside it? A stamp? Please don't touch that. I'll get in trouble. That stamp belongs to Vera, you see? She always puts it somewhere she can see it. Zack and Val, the Grimaires, isn't it? The post office issued that commemorative stamp last year, and the Grimaires with the height of their popularity. Not anymore. That one of them has vanished off the face of the earth. Vera wanted to see one of the shows when she was quite small. She's been a dedicated fan ever since. She watched them every time they came on TV. To the end! Let's see. Seems quite hard to come by it here. So I wonder how she got her hands on it. There we go. It's a pretty bottle. Ah, don't touch that, please. I'll get into trouble. Again? <laughs> Wrongs to Vera, you see. She always puts it somewhere she can see it. <laughs> She looks at it often. Some light pink fluid inside. Nail polish, I'm guessing. Mm. All right. 
get presented. And then there's this. Hey, Stamp. Hey, she spoke. She could talk. Yeah, so the Stamp. How could I keep her talking? Isn't Trick Grimmare amazing? Uh, hmm? Yes? Oh. I especially like those two, Zack and Valent. I mean, they're uh, just so magical. Aren't, aren't they? Aren't they? Yeah, whenever I go to one of their shows, I'm like, whoa, magic, you know? <laughs> me too, me too, I love them, they're so cool. It's like, like magic, yeah. All right, she's talking. Not saying much, but it's a start. I went and saw them with Father the other day. Opening ceremony at the Grimmere Museum of Magic. The gr gr museum? They, they have a museum? This makes sense now that they have their own commemorative stamp. So, have you been to one of their shows? Just once, when I was little, with Father. Grimmere's on stage. It was like a dream. Spearing, reappearing, cutting apart, putting back together. They do it all. Yeah, it, it, you can see all of stuff like this. You know, about Zack and Valent, maybe? Oh, oh, sure. All right. <laughs> Better grasp my teacher's mind. Who is this pretty blue-haired lady? A 12-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drew Misham's daughter, who is a forger. Don't go outside much. I like to paint in here. Why don't you like the outside? How old? Don't worry, we'll go to the present and then you could say that. It's fine. <laughs> but she's 12, man. <laughs> look, look. <laughs> Why don't you like the outside? There's bad people out there. Well, true, but there are lots of good people too. Actually, I should tell you that she was almost kidnapped once. K kidnapped? Since then, she's been, uh, well, you can see for yourself. She feels to leave the house. I see. Wait, but th that doesn't make sense. She said she went to the Grammaire Museum. With you, in fact. Ah, yes. Actually, she was quite insistent on it. Much to my surprise. It was the first and last time she expressed such a desire to me. That person gave me a good luck charm. Good luck charm? When I absolutely had to go outside. Yes. Apparently, she received something. A gift. From a client, actually. She won't tell me what it was. Father, I told you to keep that a secret. That client, huh? This I have to hear about. So, your father tells me you're good at painting all sorts of things. I really like painting. A lot. Father's always very happy when I paint them exactly the same. So, you did this too? Oh, yeah. That was my first job. Your first? All I used to do was paint the same thing I saw, but this was totally different. The pen slips and the way the writer held the pen and the pressure on the nib. I had to use a microscope and analyze it on the computer. He seems happy. Odd. Thor puts the last nail in the Grimmere's coffin. Guess no one told her. Father, we're gonna be on my own. I have the whole world to see. They're the best, they're the best in the world. Uh, uh, oh, you mean Troop Grimmere? Of course. Father, give it to me. Your father. But I asked him about it. He didn't know how you got it. Oh, um, I guess I just took it. Yeah. Took it. Father got a letter from that person. That person? You mean that letter was from the client? Oh, we talked about the Grimmeres forever that day. I'm sure that's why I was sent that stamp. I didn't want to just send it back, so I took it. You're a sneaky one, this client. But they were trying to get on her good side. Jesus. So, you met the person that asked you to do this job? And you talked with them? What's this, a good luck charm you received? I can't talk about it. Uh, if I do, it won't work anymore. That's what it was, that's what I was told. Yeah, but I really, really have to know. Alright, I'll do it. I don't think I won't. Right, time to do some psych unlocking. I'm about to break your good luck charm. Good luck. What do they look like? Oh, he was blonde. He had a ponytail. 
So you can quite trust this client quite a lot, in fact. Because they gave you this stamp? No, that, that's not why. They listened to me. To my problem. A problem? They keep inside all the time? Don't go outside if you don't want to. That's what they told me. But when I absolutely have to go out, all I had to do was use a good luck charm. Good luck charm. That's your client gave you. I think I know what your client might have given you, actually. Is this your good luck charm? The thing that I couldn't pick up because I, I wasn't smart enough yet? God damn it. It's, it's right over here. Maybe we'll just slide over here. You don't have psycho locks. Oh my god. What's this red envelope? Ah, don't touch that. That's it. It's quite important. The painter's face just changed hues. As I behave, let's him just grab it. Do I have to go to the present to go look at his hand, like, painting thing? Move. Look at it, Phoenix. Yellow letter! You're thinking, what self respecting man will use nail polish? Not really. I know appearances are a big thing with you. You know what I say. One cannot live a beautiful life without beautiful nails. First rate in all things, except nothing else. That certainly does look like first rate nail polish. I like the sparkly bottle. It's crystal. If you're so drawn to it, please have one. It's on me. Bingo bongo. We've gone to the past. We've got the present. Bring it back to the past. Oh, it's been bothering me since I came in here. It's not nice to pick at other people's mail. Get mail in here in jail? That I do. Though they read it first, apparently. Still, I am allowed the pleasure of correspondence. Packages and the like are different matter, however. I was like sneaking a peek out of the question. Sneak a peek. This man is in jail and giving stuff out for free. Yeah, he's got like a whole like... <laughs> if I'm going to jail, please allow me to bring my nail polish container container. <laughs> I need to give it out to visitors. See you later, Michelle. Anyway. Too bad Phoenix wasn't, uh... Smart enough to, uh, pick up the thing. Or, take a note of it. Boop. This... was what they gave you, wasn't it? <laughs> Same bottles over there on your desk. Good luck charm, right? <laughs> I heard once... I heard once cosmetics are once thought to ward off evil. This is a magic bottle. It has the power. Of course it does. I'll just refrain from commenting anymore on that one. I, I think I know who gave you that bottle, actually. The one who asked you to do this job. Was this the client? Bingo Brongo. This man is a friend of mine. Know him? His name is Christoph Gavin. He's a lawyer, actually. I promised. I promised not to tell. Ah. I'm sorry, I can't talk about the client. I promised. And if I break my promise, the spell won't work. I don't need a name anymore. I got my answer. You're pretty confident in this charm, though. I think they might be the devil. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Huh? Maybe an angel? What, what do you mean? I saw it. Or I think I saw it. When they gave me this, I saw the devil's face. Are you saying the client's face looked like the devil's? No, the client was gentle, with a gentle smile. So, where'd you see this devil then? It was so quick. I don't remember well, but that's when I knew. That person wasn't like other people. That's why I would leave my good luck charm. I'm not sure what this devil she saw it was. It's pretty clear that Christoph Gavin has her charmed. Well, I think that's all. I'll be leaving now. I'm sorry for what has happened. I'm going to apologize to my client, Zach Grimaire.
Um, did I do something bad? What makes you think that? Your eyes, they're sad. Very sad. <laughs> I'll put on my spell next time I come, I promise. I hope to see you smile then too, Vera. Oh, okay. Take care. Thinking back on my first account with the young forger, I witnessed something of vital importance that day. Of course, by the time I realized it, it was already too late. He told her he would jail her father if he, she spoke. No. He said, uh, the, the good luck charm in the outside world wouldn't work. He knew that at this point Crystal was up to some shit. I mean, yeah, he just referenced it at the beginning of this conversation. Remember? He was talking about like, oh, but you've always suspected me. Even now. Like. So Phoenix has no. What the hell was he supposed to be doing here? What is so dangerous about a profession? They were meant to be friends. I think Phoenix has been playing like 5D chess and was only friends with him to try to get closer to like get him in the scenario where he's fucked. Phoenix has been plotting his revenge for like seven years. <laughs> is my personal theory. Hey, Truth, see this? Okay, yeah, make it disappear. Yada yada. That man flashed the sus among us face. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Will you say anything about this? Jack, could you tell me about this? Oh, I, I don't want this. Okay. Thanks. Oh, yeah, I want this. Grammar secret. We have to show it's so dangerous. She's mama. She's so pretty, dude. Look at the Earth type too. Guess Drew takes after her. Hmm. Will he talk if I present the stamp? What do you think about this, Gavin? I need to remind you that I am not a free man. I care little about the outside world, save advances in chair technology. Information for coming there, I guess. What do you think about this? Mm, the devil. I see it. There's the devil. Is it? Possible that this is like a Jekyll and Hyde situation, Jekyll and Hyde, where this guy like breaks out of jail to be a prosecutor and rock out and then comes back into jail. What would a jail man care about? This guy isn't a jailed man, this guy's like a, a psycho. He just brain got juice bottle for no reason. Wait, hold on. Remember something that I never game. It reminds me. I saw from my face. I think this is a repeat. That'd be weird. Yeah, I called you. Why'd you do it? And he has black lock locks. Hmm. 
Mm-mm. Yeah, the Cyclops. Whoa! Prosecutor of the first case was just him running back and forth. <laughs> they weren't present! You, they've never been in the same room together. They've never been in the same room? They were? I don't remember that. Because there's a whole thing about, whoa, who's this guy? What the, what the hell? Who prosecuted the first case? Him! Kristoff! No, Kristoff was our fellow defendant. The first person to prosecute the first case was the, the default guy, uh, Mr. Payne. The same guy it always is. Yeah, I messed up. I, miss, I, I messed up that first part where they ask, okay, wait, what is your position in court? Payne wasn't here. Motherfucker. You've done it. I've been aggroed. I'm going into my own VOD. We're doing full time travel? No, we're just thinking. <laughs> it had, it, 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 there's some like. I don't know. It's, it's, it's game. We're gaming. I'm in the old VOD. Okay. Hey, Joe. I want you to do me a favor. Can you uh, go ahead and read uh, the name that's underneath this green suited man's uh, just name that little name title there. Whenever, whenever you're ready. It's, uh... Whenever you'd like. It's right there. Do you see it? Yeah, yeah, can, can you can you name who this person is? The one that I'm pointing at? <laughs> can, you t can you tell me who this is? Who, who is currently arguing, uh, I would say perhaps as a, uh... As a, uh, a prosecutor? Is here. <laughs> They've never been in the same room, Joe. There was a whole transaction about like, wow, why does this guy look like Kristoff? Oh, it's his brother. That's weird. <laughs> and now you're making it a joke. Stop making it a joke. What do you think this is a comedy stream? You think this is funny? You have proof of this danger, show it. Could it not be that she's just missing? Is that not proof enough of danger? That you shot each other? Why, that's one of ours. Specifically designed for your show, I gather. A single bullet? One shot? What are you suggesting? We are magicians, Mr. Wright, not murderers. I'm not crying murder, Mr. Valent. I'm crying something far more tragic. An accident. Zack and Valent, quick draw, shoot him. How long has it been since those shots were last heard? Was the shoot him canceled because someone might got hurt? Of course. What are the reason could there be? Well, if it could have been canceled because someone had already been hurt. Fascinating, my Faustian forging friend. But tell me, what can you prove with a single pistol? Oh, tell me what would happen if there had been an accident. What if one of your bullets took a life on stage? The performance of magic is not the performance of not con magic is not concerned with what ifs. It's concerned with precision. Precisely whom do you claim we shot? Is the right path? 
Let's just hope he walks it with me. I have a sacrifice that the show might go on. In the show, this shows who it was. But that's... Zach Grimaire's wife, and Trusi's mother. Thalassia, I believe was her name. Ah, uh, I like a <laughs> There's some man in front of Carmen Francis. Is Carmen in the same room? Yeah! Because <laughs> she never entered a jail cell. <laughs> How can you say this? And besides, you think I'm against implying that that's just him cross-dressing? You think that's a problem? You think I won't- I think I won't agree with that? I'm gonna say she was struck by one of our bullets. Still in denial mode, huh? That she was at the greatest risk of being shot, and this clearly shows just how much danger she was in. What? Um... This. The troop Grimaire's performance were very, very popular. So popular, they even made a commemorative stamp at the height of your fame. We're not merely the latest craze. We were an age. A golden age. It's all here on the stamp. There's Thalysia. Yes? Uh, Trucy's mother is missing, I hear. What happened to her? I... I don't know. And this memory is still locked up. There is one thing you are failing to address. What is that? As you say, our troop was a world unto itself. If our leader, Magnifi, was so inclined, he could hide anything he wished with ease. But, Mr. Wright, then he would have hated a crime, being him an accomplice. Not a great foundation of blackmail. Child's got a point. Well, if the troop members died in an accident and the Magnifi covered it up, his innocence would come into question. Found the right address, Mr. Wright? I'm so close. There has to be something. And how fast his death would affect Zack and Palin's relationship with Magnifi. It's in your eyes. You still have something to say? How many possibly prove that you would have that more than you already have? I'll prove why Thalsia's accident tied your hands so completely. It's because he was. Are you trying to... Are you trying to hide it from Trucy? Wait, are they trying to hide it from Trucy? That's totally what it is, isn't it? It's gonna take a little knowledge of the players to crack this one. The accidental death of Zack's wife tied to both your hands, and this information proves why I mean if you held so much power over you. Yeah. <laughs> Were you by any chance trying to threaten me? Uh, no, of course not. You'll never make a good blackmail artist. Never. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, oh, what a shame. What a career choice I'd be considering, actually. Give your dreams. Work your honest job. That's my advice. <laughs> Troop was... Tight knit unit. It's all about people involved. Their personalities, their histories. Who was Thalcio really? Oh, okay. No, I, I, th I think it is... Uh... Sooner Shrew's wife held so much power over you. Uh... Because... Passing down the rights to Zack. It wasn't a question who shot Thalassia. Thalassia herself was the problem. What? What do you mean? She was Zach Grimaire's wife, Trucy's mother, and Magnifi Grimaire's only daughter. <clears throat> there was a terrible accident. The two of you killed your mentor's only daughter. If that wasn't the key to Magnifi's power over you, I don't know what it was. There we go. I was right. It had to do with him being uh, the father. It. It. It was. It was an accident. Here, maybe this will explain it for you, Mikey. There's no proof, not at all. But Thalcy went missing. 
and your mentor blackmailed both of his disciples, it doesn't take a genius to put one and one together. Ours was a complex family. You mean Troop Grimaire? Master, my TV Grimaire, his only daughter, and his two disciples. That doesn't like a recipe for disaster, doesn't it? Do not be tempted into faulty flights of fancy. Yes, there was an accident. But that is all it was. An accident. Zack and Valence tore the force. The guns blaze, the bullets fly, straight toward that beautiful body on stage. And then crash, zing, pow, into everything but her. Now that is magic. Apple one day when we were practicing. Same trick with a new twist. And tragedy. But for those whose bullet stole Thalysia's life, we shall never know the answer. Thalysia disappeared from our lives, and Zack was bereft of his wife. Rosie lost her mother, and Magnifi, his daughter. That led to blackmail, I take it. It's all part and parcel of the darkness that comes with the curtain falls. Why did Magnifi Grimaire try to cover up the accident? It was his own daughter who died. All I can say is, it was a critical time for Troop Grimaire, the passing of the torch from Magnifi to Zack and Valiant. Valiant, we all sacrificed so it might be a success. Althea's death was the greatest sacrifice of all. Yet, even when her life was extinguished, her presence was not. What do you mean? In time, we, myself, and Zack found we could no longer oppose Magnifi's wishes. Magnifi forced us to perform his art for his benefit. Let's see. I guess I understand. I mean, he did lose his only daughter, but do you not find cowardice in his action? Huh? To decide to hide the truth of your own daughter's death is one thing, but then to hang that death as a guillotine above our heads. Things are dark behind the scenes of the Troop Grimaire, that's for sure. Is Trissy know? She was not told, naturally. Who would want to know that their father might have taken their mother's life? Room. I had not thought of that accident for a very long time. I'm sorry to touch up old memories, but this has helped a lot. Not to find Manny V. Slayer, I should think. True. Ah. After that accident, there was one who came sniffing quite persistently. A reporter? He called himself a newsman at the time. Often I spied him lurking about the dressing room doing his research. Do you remember his name? What was his name? Sorry, I forgot. But, in the course of his interview, he became quite close to my partner, Zach. I liked him not. I see. His name, I do not recall, but his scent. The cloying aroma of mint. Yes, whatever he smiled, which was far too often. Is he about to become... is... <laughs> is Spark Brushel about to become, like, a key player in all this? He already is, isn't he? He's been the whole time. He's... VITAL to the case. <laughs> I see. Thanks for your help. It does no good to interfere with the past, Mr. Wright. You are not on cover answers, only wounds. I'm sorry. Why would Zack be close to Brushel? They admitted they were friends. I began to notice a dark curtain hanging over the trooper mayor, and I began to realize what I had to do. I had to protect Trucy from the darkness. Reporter, he mentioned. The newsman. I never learned who that was at the time. Though I've got a pretty good idea who it is now. The smile. The sickly sweet smell of mint. The last lost thin thread connecting Zachary to this world. Sooner or later, I have to track him down. Who's ready to be present? Oh, wow. We got everything. We're starting here. I think this will be the easiest one to crack. Oh! Well, this is a blast from the distant past. Long time no see, Mr. Valent. Seven years, is a bit. Frankly, I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Actually, I came because there's something I wanted to ask you. I've spoken to the press. I have nothing more to say. I've spoken to a lot of people myself and come to some conclusions. Then I realized I need to hear it from you. Bye.
I, I thought, what is he doing here? I want, I want to talk to Mr. Mint. <laughs> well, 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 what do we have here? <laughs> mm -hmm. Remember me? Of course I remember you. <laughs> Journalist meets ex attorney in bar. End quote. Can I ask you what you're doing here? Mr. Mission was poisoned and his daughter's. Oh, yes, I, I know. Oh, I, I know. Yes. <laughs> it caused me no end of grief, to be honest. <laughs> that journalist wishes he'd track down case just a little quicker. <laughs> End quote. Are you going to try to chill this case the whole time? <laughs> Zach Romer was a good friend. Zach said something to that effect back at the Borscht Bowl Club. <laughs> what a character. What a man. If a little, uh, no, a lot. No, extremely over on the edges. Do you think I could ask you a few questions? <laughs> oh, he's serious? I mean, I'm used to the interviewer, not interviewee. <laughs> Journalists ask questions, not the other way around. <laughs> End quote. Mm -hmm. uh, fine, shoot, I don't care. <laughs> People have been asking me all sorts of things lately. You love this. It's a funny voice. It was tragic what happened to Drew Mission and his daughter. Can you stop? Can, can you can you stop? Mo? What do you mean? Mm. Mm. No, no, stop moving your head. It's like, oh, no, quit it. Why are you? Mm, mm. Stop! Why? Oh! <laughs> it's distract. It was tragic what happened to Drew Mission and his daughter. The forgery is a serious crime, and they paid the price. You know what really did them then, though? Don't you? Yes, a forged diary page. The night I interviewed him. I found out something about Mr. Misham I hadn't known. What's that? You know, he always felt it was like being he was being watched. Every day for seven years. Walls have ears, pairs have eyes. End quote. Being watched? We need to feel guilty. No, 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 I'm not talking about feelings here. You, you know, I felt watched too. The whole time I've been on this case, no less. Journalist gets tingling sensation on the back of neck. Freaks out. End quote. Because you felt guilty? Why would I feel guilty? <laughs> you feel like you're being watched, huh? I don't know what that means. Drew Mission felt like he was being watched. And you along with him? Are you sure it wasn't just nerves? Nerves? No, <laughs> it's nothing so mundane. I stopped paying attention to my nerves a long time ago. <laughs> but I felt it too. Journalist, sure, he's being watched. End quote. Don't you wonder why Zach Romero got rubbed out in seven years? Right after coming into contact with me? He completely vanishes from that courtroom. Then, for seven years, he talks to no one, not a soul. Then, just as the remaining time was almost up, he contacts me in order to have this made. And then, he dies. I'm starting to put the pieces together, are we? And you're being watched this whole time? Oh, maybe not just me. Maybe you were too. Me? I met Zach through that case, actually. You mean the shooting of Magnifique Grammaire? No, before that. It's not widely known. You mean, the accident during the quick draw shooting practice. Oh my my, you're well informed. You should have seen me back then. I dug up quite a scoop. One doll, money, fame, women, a little puppy. Oh, must have misread that. All for me. I was younger then, and my days and nights smelled of fresher mint than they do now. Alec Grimmer didn't mention one particularly noisy reporter. It cut too early. <laughs> In fact, I was on close speaking terms with Magnifique Grimmer all the time. I knew his daughter too. Of course, Valencia wasn't. Really? Can, no, really, can, can you stop? Ooh. <laughs> then Valencia disappeared, quite suddenly at that. And Magnifique wouldn't say a word about it. Yeah, my evil habit got the better of me. Journalist catches scent of the scoop goes on feeding frenzy. End quote. I set up a one-on-one -on -one interview with Alicia's husband, see? Zach Grammer? Something strange in the air over the troop Grammer in those days. A whole screwy mentor controlling disciples scene started by then, I'm guessing. Alicia, she was part of it all, right? Come on, you can tell me, off the record. Sorry, I don't know. Oh, 
Anyway, I kept praying, prying, and eventually became friends with Zack. Sure, he punched me once or twice, or five times, but over time he came to see me as his confidant. Oh. <laughs> He's been waiting this whole time. Seven years, eh? Waiting? Oh, for his big comeback, of course. A big revival of the Magnifi Miracle. Of course, it was all a dream. Listen to this. The performance rights? Hey, man! What's going I just realized his voice been changing. Uh, in the absence of any official documents, he was golden. Does it say the old man didn't give his rights to both Zack and Alan? Uh, should I be, like, Twitch streamer or Twitch nerd? <laughs> Is basically what those two voices are. He's transformed from fire guy to like nerd voice. Nerd. Okay. Fair enough. Nerd. <laughs> you don't want something like this? Come on, man. <laughs> Who said the old man didn't give his rights to both Zack and Valent? So, Valent went until Zack died. Legally, at least. Well, the time finally comes, and Valent's like a cat on Christmas morning. Getting for a show at Sunshine Coliseum, you know. If that document sees the legal light of day, it's gonna put a bit of a tamper on the big show. He's a sorry one. I'm Alan Grammer. Lost out to his partner at work, and in love, too. Love? It's the same old story, really. Two disciples and their mentor's only daughter. But it's three sides and all of them pointy. A love triangle. That's pretty classic. When you're performing troop, that's your world. It's like family. One with an entire... High school's worth of drama, intrigue, and backstabbing, and stuffing me in a locker. <laughs> in the middle of all this, Alessia has truce. Can you st st quit? St stop it. <laughs> and then she dies. I find out more about this Thalassia. Mr. Bruchel, do you know this person? Oh, do I know that person? Of course. <laughs> His friends with Zack, after all. He hit me a few times. Five times, actually. But still, I'd never forget his wife. Alessia Grimaire. And if Grimaire's only daughter, do you think you could tell me more about her? Well, why the heck not? <laughs> so, Alessia married Zack and had truth, you see. It was her second marriage, actually. I mean, she was divorced. I hadn't heard this one before. Oh, not quite. Her late husband was a performer, too. Apparently, he died during some gig. Tragic, really. They had only been married one year. I didn't know. Ah, but she was a beauty. I still carry a portrait photo of her around, you know? Uh, this is... kind of weird, Ruchel. Ah, I've known Trucy since I was a little thing, too. He got that better deal, really. He's got you for family, after all. What do you mean? Oh, just reminiscing, you know. Alessia has another child besides Trucy. End quote. Uh, huh? What? But, but Trucy said she was an only child. Uh, yeah, uh, this one she had with her previous husband. Her previous husband. Her first husband who died during a performance? Yeah, they had themselves a kid. Another orphan, now. And that's another one who slipped through the cracks. <laughs> no, no idea where they are now. The last I had another child. You think I could borrow that photo? Oh, sure. I can be generous on occasion, you know. I don't need this locket anymore. Better return it to Trucy before I forget. Oh, people and events get all tickled together. And bigger and bigger. Uh, don't you think? It's too busy wondering about bigger to listen to what you're saying. I think Mikey was correct. What's up with this family? Is it better or worse than the Faye family? <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta accept that you won't be able to untangle it all, I think. Maybe so, but still, I have to do what I can. And I have to tell what I find to those who come next. Next, you say? I'm not the one who will close the curtain on this little play. Apparently that's not my role anymore. Magnifi. I was just wondering what Magnifi would think of all this. What do you mean? Oh, haven't you seen Trucy? She's got his power. You mean, how oh, I can't lie to Trucy? Oh, it was the same with Magnifi. And his daughter, Athelasia. Strange thing. You can think of some rare gene. Oh, Magnifi told me once back when Zack married Athelasia. He said Zack had good eyes. Not good like Grimaire eyes. Not that good. I wonder if Zack ever played a game of poker with his wife. This is what the Grimaire secret was. Maybe nobody knows that Zack's gone. 
Necromare. And it finally begins to unravel, to reveal itself, even. Apart from a warp in the Grimmere fabric and groove, swallowing everything. Wrapping itself around the Grimmere's power. Power was passed from Magnific Grimmere to Thalassia to the next generation. I wondered once again. I uh, wonder, and I would once again need to meet. The one who bridged it all together. Wait. Yes, Mikey? Wait a second. Apollo can't be the orphan, right? Why would he? That'd be weird. <laughs> hey, tell me about this gene. I think I know you don't want to talk about her. It's not this, is it? Or it's this? The three of you were a team once. Not that the entire country doesn't already know this. It's this weird Shrine thing. Like, you think he has the ability to read people really well? Just, just like this family line? That would be weird. Why would he have an origin story in every single game? Anyway, at your peak, you were the biggest stars around. Yep, there's another story behind the fame. One that not many know. Unless he lost her life during a rehearsal. To you and Valent, Grimaire's bullets. It was an accident. It, it wasn't me. How could I shoot my dear Thalassia? Sure, Valent would say the same thing. Why? It's just like another murder I might mention. Damn you. <laughs> Eyes. I love Thalassia's eyes. To think they could read my mind was frightening. But if there was a warmth in them that I felt like an embrace, she's dead. And Magnifico Romero has joined her. So the only one with her power left now is Trusy. Mr. Zack? I do not know. I don't have any power to see through that one, buddy. So there's someone else. Someone other than Trusy? Someone who inherited Thalassia's power? <laughs> How would I know? My chances are slim. Take a miracle to learn the truth. Maybe when it's already occurred. There is someone else with the power, and I know who. This this boy. This who the Did I lost something? Hold on. I was like fidgeting with <laughs> the most dramatic moment. This little nerd. This twink. <laughs> this fruit. His name is... I forget. It's something weird. Who could he be? An attorney. Oh, attorney? I know someone went to visit a friend's law offices. So, what are we to make of this little great ex-attorney? You can show me pictures of the strange boys all you like. <laughs> but you can at least say something like, I'm this boy. I could use a laugh. Perhaps you wouldn't laugh if you knew the facts. This might not be 100% proof, but it's close. There's a link between this boy and Thalassia. Actually, it's more of a ring. A ring? Perhaps this will refresh your memory. I just happen to have evidence showing this missing link. Actually, I know something. Your marriage to Thalassia was her second. How'd you know this? Her first husband. He died a year after they were wed. Yes? He was a performer. It meant when he joined us, Grimaire as a guest on our show. Thalassia wed him. She loved the troop for a while. And you say she had a child then? I have a photograph of her here. I can't help but notice he was wearing when I 
saw this. Those bracelets stand out. <laughs> you're, you're led to look away because of the, the shite, the bright, the, 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 the bright and shiny earring. But yeah, she's got the bracelets on. <laughs> there go, my family heirloom. Boy. Where is a bracelet just like the ones in the picture? What? So, that's why. That's right. The, the brass allergy bracelets. <laughs> just banded another child. <laughs> well, what, Mr. Zack? I took this photograph of Battleship before she left us. When she returned, she wore only one bracelet. I don't know where the other one went. She gave it to this boy. Son. Did you know this all the time? I knew that he had an origin story. I didn't think that he was going to be a grammaire child. No. Uh, that, that is a loud criticism of these games. That, uh... Apollo gets like 17 origin stories. Anyway. Miss Strange Power. I myself do not know where it comes. Yet the fact is that it passed down the grammaire line. It runs in the veins. Is it? I asked her. <laughs> Why is there spunk everywhere? The fuck? Hi, Cosmo. It's a good question. Thank you for 39 months. Hey, that's her. I don't see her once. This is what she told me. Her power responds to tension in others. Tension. She would have faced a person, they became tense, even slightly, and she would know, no matter how they tried to hide it from her. So she could see it. In the background. That's snow, man! <laughs> like, fake snow. Misty and Theresia is competition for who's more of a deadbeat absent mom. I think Misty is winning for now. <laughs> she can see it. Not quite. This is the strangest part of it all. She couldn't realize that she was subconsciously doing this tension without the use of a particular object, or in her case, objects. Objects? Wait, are they something she wore? Yes. Her bracelets. Oh. And she has the earring. Dude, she was kitted. Who who got the like? <laughs> well, this like whole uh, armor set. We got the earrings, the bra the bracelets. Uh, we got the the hair ties. Who got the hair ties? Did that come in the sixth game? I am the grammaire child. I got the hair ties for my hair. <laughs> anyway. Yes, her bracelets. I meant the first time I saw one of those, I felt there was more to it than just fashion. Plus one to magic if you have the whole set? Yeah. It increases your charisma and perception. What kind of power could Bracelet have? I made a decision. I will tell you all I know. Did her a gift. Oh, thank God! Well, I hardly need you to tell me at this point, but those two are brother and sister, yes. And the brother, too, has this power of theirs. So Trucy has an older brother. I wonder what will come of that. Mr. Wright, tonight, after our game is done, I will return to a life of hiding. Will not see her live in life without knowing? I understand. I'll tell the two of them at the time is right. I am injured yet. Once again. No kidding. What I want to know is how all this got to be so messed up. Those bracelets are made of a special alloy. Is said to expand and shrink very slightly in response to body warmth. So they're temperature sensitive or something. Yes. This is how they can shrink in the exact size of the wearer's wrist. And this has something to do with the power? Have I told you? The grammar power reacts to tension in others. The grammar senses tension, they too become tense. And this tension translates to minute contractions of the muscles. So minute? Cannot sense so minute they cannot sense it up on their own. Muscles? The muscles! Oh, that's what the bracelets are for. Bracelet on, we can sense these contractions. Because the bracelet is always a perfect fit. So when the person they're watching gets tense, the bracelet feels tighter on the wrist. Precisely. 
That alone doesn't really count as a mind reading. I believe I understand how the process works from there. It's a simple question of eyesight. Eyesight? They're empaths. Yeah. They're an empath. <laughs> Sounds simple enough. Have you ever heard of kinetic vision? Something about the ability to see moving objects with full clarity, right? I've heard of it before. You see, athletes can see a moving ball like it was stopped. They focus. Oh, but it's not confined to sports alone. It all relies on the ability to focus. When we focus, we can see many things. The faintest twitch of the face. And the meaning that lies beneath, behind it. Therein lies one of the secrets of magic. One must know the mind of the crowd before one may distract it. So, basically what you're saying is... The Cremeres can see really well. Oh, for them, seeing is more than believing. It's annoying. Power relies on eyesight to with exceptional focus. Things are starting to come to focus for me, too. Of course, it is difficult to maintain such levels of focus for any length of time. But what if someone could tell you when to focus? Or something? I'm sure why the writers bought with the pseudoscience, given this is a universe with real ghosts and magic. Because they didn't, <laughs> they didn't want to be in a scenario where all of the original trilogy, I was thinking, just call in, like, I know that was a whole plot point. Call in the guy that got murdered. I know that was a plot point. I don't care. Do it every time. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's this? Oh, dude, Maya looks so different. She, like, gained a giant breast. That's weird. No, your honor. She's being possessed. Let's hear from the client. You can physically see the change. It's proof enough. Let's hear what the let's hear what the murdered has to say. Like <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. They're not that big. Oh my. Precisely. Wait, Trissy doesn't have any bracelets. You're talking about poker, yes? Timing of when to focus is so elementary, she probably does it without thinking. I doubt Trissy here herself has realized this. That is all I know of things from here. Thank you, Mr. Zack. This voice bracelet is the real thing, then you'll use it before long. Thereby we can use power. Keep that in mind. Well, shall I play a game? <laughs> I've said so much. Let me say one more thing. I'll tell you that night. That night? The night my mentor, Magnifico Mayor, passed from this world to the next. There were two pistols and two letters sent. This might mean if he's test. Test? His last year, late, in his last years, Magnifico Mayor worked on us to the bone. No, to the pain. That night, I could not shoot him. I shot the clowns fired instead. This, it seems, was the correct answer. Pick this. I give my heart to you, Zack. What? It's a strange for playing along for my show, George. You shot well tonight, Zack. Though I would not have minded dying by your hand. Who could I shoot you? You're my mentor. Bah, I thought you might say that. I'm not too bad, dear. <laughs> if I went home without shooting anything, what would you have done then? Well, of course, I would have given Valent his chance. I shot you in the forehead instead. Then it would be over. If you are Valent, were to shoot me in the head, then I to the darkness would go, and my heart with me. A fitting end, don't you think? Ah. Yet this ending, too, gives me no cause for regret. Thank you, Zack. And, I'm sorry. I've done much that was wrong in my day. It seems to me that Magnifi wanted you to be a successor all along. That's why the time he gave you was earlier than Valance. Perhaps. But it's not something we'll ever know for sure now. I wonder. What is Valance up to these days? Waiting for you to, uh, die. Seven years pass like this, the performance rights go to him. Ah. Uh, now here I am, when his dream is ended. It's worse than that, actually. Public opinion's a fickle thing, you know. What? You don't mean to tell me they put the blame for Mentor's death on him? The trial ended when you vanished, Mr. Zack. There are even rumors that Valen had helped you pull it off. That's madness. Oh. Seems that before I can once again disappear from this world, I have one more act to perform. 
There's no one that turning up my life should prove so complicated, even though I'm dead. That night, Sacramento was killed. He died as Shady Smith, a mysterious traveler of the secret past. But he left one thing behind before he parted. This! Who may concern? Seven years past, I, Zach Gramare, murdered my mentor, Magnifi Gramare. I apologize for the trouble caused by my sudden departure from court, and hereby confess to my crime. His confession. Jesus, I saw fit. Of course, he killed no one. This is his way of tying up loose ends with his old partner, Violet Gramare. Oh my. Hmm. What a mess. No kidding. Zach, we want the truth. Mikey, this guy did it! I think it's Phoenix. We are currently Phoenix Wright. We are currently Phoenix in the background of previous cases, just running around talking to people. This guy did it, Mikey. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> we proved it in everything. But people must know. That's not how justice works, Mickey. Sometimes the people can't know. Anyway, I'll be back.
Hello. Thank you. I want you to know. When I was talking about how that's not how justice works. <laughs> I meant this justice. <laughs> Laugh track. Anyway. <clears throat> You're so funny. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> what, is, what is that about? I have walked a difficult road in these past seven years. Is he going to perform if he's for core? Do not be deceived. Balance skills the real deal. I don't require mentors and me downs. No, it's my partner who slowed me on my way. Is that Grimaire? I suppose that's what you expected chat to say. Well, it can't hurt to have pots reinforcement, could it, Mikey? I thought it'd be funny. His brother will perform this bearing act. Seven years ago was the end. So I thought. Zachary murdered our mentor and fled to escape punishment for his crimes. And something that affects seven years ago, didn't you? I remember as if it were only yesterday. Yet, that was not the only that was not the way of it. In the end, for a while he vanished. The suspicions upon my own person never did. His partner, Zach, vanished to protect him. That's what those thieving magpies of the press said. I giggled. I have no idea. And the very same press comes to me now, feigning interest. Think of the greatest magic show in history as if it were a vault villain distraction. And here I must I stand, smiling at them all. What am I if not a player in some fiendish farce? And I suggest it's because you never made it clear what happened? Magtv's death is still a mystery to this day. Which is why I came here to get an answer from you. <laughs> Good work, SJ. I knew I'd be seeing you sooner or later. The audience has no business stepping up on the stage. They must be content to sit and stare at the spotlight. That's an awful lot like something I hear, heard seven years ago. Alright. Ask what you will. Look at nothing from me. I'm as much of a part of this affair as you are now. I have to know what happened. Seven long years I've endured. Now, finally, the curtain lifts on my new golden age. All the miracles of our troop within my grasp. Sorry to do this, Fallon, but right now I need answers. I think I'll start by dropping a bomb. That should thing things up. Fallon, I won't be so sure about those miracles. Not as long as I have. Oh, this. And what might this be? I see it bears the Grimaire seal. I should have brought this to your attention sooner. But I didn't imagine you'd be planning your comeback quite so fast. What is this? A document showing the true recipient of the performance rights to Magnifi's miracles. What? Zack Grimaire, he wrote this? What? He passed everything to his daughter? Trucy Enigmar. Actually, she's officially my daughter these days. Preposterous. Zack. Zack is gone. Vanished to the void. This is the genuine article. Zack was alive when he wrote this. Both myself and the Nordenry could testify to this. What? Why? Why does fate toy with me so? Why must my life be lived to thrall of the dead? I'm not the only one with that problem. But he shot Magnifi. Yes, it was Zack. It was. And when he left, and my career as a magician fell in the darkness. Do you think there might be some way out of it? Say, if you could prove Zack Grimaire shot Magnifi? Was, it, was that why you testified? Yes, my way out. It should have been my way out. Oh, it might not be too late, Mr. Valent. All you need is a way to prove your case. Who really killed me, Niffy Grimaire? I believe I have the answer to your prayers right here. Zach Grimaire wrote one more thing before passing on. This, but this is a confession. In which he admits to the killing of Magnifique Grimaire. See? Not according to your plan. 
I am a magician by trade. Deception is my life's work. I fool the audience, give them a fleeting dream. Yet, it seems the tables have turned. No, I am the audience, believing in the deceptions I have wrought upon myself. Zach wrote this right in front of me. After I explained your situation to him. A la Kazoom! <laughs> if Zack is friends with Valent, why take this away why take away from him the art? This is Fortune Evidence too! But the the thing that he actually wrote, like yeah, he didn't actually murder him, but he can clean it up this whole scenario by taking the blame and so he can move on. And do his own show. Because he wants to pass down the trucy. Zack signature. I'm sure he was written many times, being an X star and all. <laughs> There's plenty of people out there who kill for a Zack Grimmer autograph. <laughs> Mikey, it is, sometimes it isn't about the truth, Mikey. It's not more evidence, it's just lying. <laughs> you do know that this confession is nothing but lies. Yes. It is my opinion that Zack Grimmer killed no one. Then you must be thinking the truth is a simple matter of elimination. Two received instructions to kill, but if one is innocent, the other one who remain the other one who remains is guilty. That would be the logical conclusion. Yes. So he vanished to protect me. Partner. <laughs> the stirring tale is true. Did you true Ma did you shoot Magnifique Grimaire in the forehead? If I had, and I told you, what would you do? Run to the police, perchance? Do as you will. There's nothing left for me now. It is true, after all. I have a little talent. I needed my mentor Magnifi's repertoire. It was as if a little demon grabbed hold of me. I knew it. So Valent Grimaire did kill the great Magnifi. <laughs> so sorry, Mr. Wright. But it was not I who shot my mentor. What? what? But if it wasn't you, then who was it? There was another disciple. There was another disciple, was there? Another disciple? Such as... I don't know. Knack and Talent Grammar, maybe? Your wild fantasies couldn't be further from the truth. Only Zack and Valent received those threatening letters. But there was another. One more person could have fired that pistol that night. I don't suppose you've figured it out by now? It wasn't Zack or Valen who shot me, Nithi. Then I had to be the only other person at the scene. Which means... Wait. You don't mean... The doctor? Yes. The great Manifi Grimaire himself. It was called at 10.40. So Magnifique Grimaire committed suicide? You find it hard to believe? To be honest, I hadn't even imagined it's a possibility. When I arrived that night, the old man was still alive. He appeared to be asleep. I could not shoot him. When I turned and made to leave in the room, the old man called out to me. So you spoke with the ma Magnifique Grimaire? Yes. And this is why I knew what he had done. I knew he transferred the rights to his preparatory to my partner, Zach Grimaire. Not me. I see. And I guess I owe you an apology. I was, thought you were the one who did it. You owe me no apology. Huh? My crime was, in a way, more serious than that of murder. What? Your crime? Is Valent Grimaire confessing something to me? What could be more serious than murder? You see, I knew that two letters had been sent. There were no secrets between partners. It was easy to find out. That was when I understood Magnifi's plan. You wanted to die by one of your hands? Little did I expect that had anything to do with the rights to his repertoire. That was when I heard it. That little demon whispering inside my heart. Demon? Let me confess. I had intended to shoot Magnifi. And I planned on framing my partner for the crime. What? That night, I prepared something before going to Magnifi's hospital room. Which was? IV fluid, of course. I'd seen an earlier visit. If Zack did not shoot, I would do the deed. Then, I would use the IV liquid to place the murderer in his hands. That was my plan. But you didn't shoot him. I could not. 
The demon in my heart fled when the moment came. Then, Magnifi called me back. I'm sorry, Valen. I'm giving my magic to Zack, not you. You still lack the draw he has. Please, help him if you can. I left the room. And then I stopped. The shock of what had just been told consumed me. That is when I heard that our fateful gunshot. And if you're mayor, killing himself. Then the demon awoke anew within me. Zack killed him. He was the one. Frame him and the magic will be yours. I altered the scene of the suicide. I took the pistol from his hand, wiped off the prints, and I used the syringe to add the IV liquid I'd brought. So in the end, things happened pretty much as planned. And if he died, and you framed Zack for his murder. As planned, indeed. Of course, the outcome was somewhat different than I anticipated. Well, what do you think? Do you believe my story? Can it be believed, truly? That was seven years ago. I don't know what to believe. But. Yes. I'm glad I heard it from you, Mr. Valen. Thank you. It is I who should be thanking you, Mr. Wright. Only when I had lost everything did I make my decision. Did it turn yourself in? My partner may have vanished, but not so my guilt. And so as my guilt stays, I will begin to leave me. My friends, my performance right, my magic. I don't know if a vanishing axe. I understand. I thought my life was ruled by a dead man. But I find I was wrong. For Zach Grimaire was alive. No, not anymore. <laughs> now, it occurs to me, what if he was not the only one who survived? What do you mean? You see, now that I think about it, I realize that I... No, we never saw proof of her demise. We never saw her body. That... Uh, her? The mind raises and the mouth flaps on. My apologies. Forget this matter. I can only hope that the day will come when I again meet my partner, Zach Grimaire. Then, I shall apologize for my terrible mistake. I'm glad we had this change of chance to talk. Thank you. Zach Grimaire. Shady Smith. Whichever name you prefer, he's no longer with us. He revealed that trial was only a sliver, and the impenetrable darkness that remained has taken another life. I knew what I had to do to push back the darkness for good. It would involve paying that man a visit. And War comes back from Bulgaria? Sorry, sir. Mikey, are you trying to imply that this woman that looks a lot like a certain Bulgarian woman has who has amnesia who doesn't remember her past, who conveniently is blind and cannot see a child that perhaps looks like her. It looks... It, that that just seems... That seems very slim. That this child... It looks like this woman, except that the woman wore a mask, and were blind, and played, <laughs> played piano. <laughs> it's not Bulgaria, but... <laughs> Uh, Prisoner Christoph Gavin is currently occupied. I see. Do you know when he'll be finished? Uh, uh, well... Could you go find out? Uh, certainly, sir. Please wait here a moment. My apologies to the guard. There's something I need to see. Mm, the goat! Sheesh! There it is. The yellow envelope. I'll be back. <laughs> All I needed was the brooch. Brooch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like... Okay. Congrats on the diamond. Dad moment. <laughs> anyway. 
The sender is Drew Misham. I was right. Oh, when I arrived at your studio, Mr. Misham was at his desk. He seemed to be writing a letter, but he quickly sealed the envelope. It was a yellow envelope. I heard it was left at the time scene crimes. The last letter that Drew Misham wrote. There's something I need to do. Last thing I need to do, in fact. Here goes. Let's see if this Edge Queen spray finds anything. Oh my! So this was Drew Misham's messenger of death. This is the stamp, all right? No mistake in it. His last letter was sent to Christoph Gavin. Interview request came like you said it would, and they're logging into the case. I swear on my life, I won't tell them about you, so please release the spell you put on my daughter. I'll write later with a report. Oh, what are we toggling to? What do you want? What you want? Spells the charm, right? <laughs> Steal his mail. Uh, decisive evidence. What's this? A burglar in jail? <laughs> Gavin! I didn't know you moonlighted in larceny, right? Gavin, there's something I have to ask you. Can I steal your stuff? The answer is no. My apologies, but there's not much I care to discuss. Baron Misham hasn't received her verdict yet. Follow me, Gavin. There are no known survivors of Energy Queen poisoning, but it never hurts to hope. Okay. I'll be leaving now, though. Right. Wait. Yeah, Gavin? Would you mind leaving that letter? It's private. Oh. Sorry, I forgot I had it. Many thanks. <laughs> okay. Just blow him up. Wait, he has a camera? He has a camera in his- <laughs> Phoenix is a genius! Where did this avatar come from? Ask Mikey. You're now seeing on the clues in this case. Clues I gathered over seven long years. Now, it is time. Every story has an ending. Come to the final chapter. The final trial. Find the truth. You're the only ones who can. Wait. Wait, does he know I'm streaming? What do you mean? <laughs> Hi, comrade. <laughs> How was your stream? Find the truth. Yo, what is that? Hello, strange ghost. Oh, the dance. Thank you, Lord, for the follow. Hi, welcome. Uh, I don't know Ukrainian. But, uh, welcome. <laughs> hey, Elhart. There's the shadow right there. Hell yeah. I don't know what he was streaming, but I bet it was cool. The guy finds, like, crazy niche games. Cozy stuff. Th this would be the music that's playing in the game that he's playing right now. I don't know, I don't know about Phoenix staring at him while he's doing it, but Hi. Uh you you've kinda caught us at a bad time. <laughs> uh this is like the end of the game. Um 
Should I attempt to give a recap here? When I can? I, I, don't, I don't have... I don't, I don't have the court record, so I can't be pointing at evidence quite yet, but... Welcome. I, I hope you guys have a good day if you must take out. It was Noiter plus Draw. Ah. Let's rest now and have dinner. Understandable. Enjoy your rest, enjoy your dinner. I'll see you later. Why the truth, dude? The ones who can. What, is, what does he mean, ones? Is he talking? Is this is this like a recording? Like he made a video and he was like, "Hey, open this up, Trucy." Did he put himself in front of a green screen for this? I'm still here. Leave! <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, man. Welcome to the court. Seven years. Only to one verdict. A verdict which you must decide. Wait, what? Wait, hold on, wait. We're the jury? Hold on, wait. Was he showing this? Was he showing all these videos to the jury? Is that what's happening right now? Is the defendant, Varamisham, innocent? Or guilty? The courtroom doors are opening. The trial awaits. Are you ready to begin? Okay. He showed this to the jury. I love how people don't have context might think that you're just a big fan of this random- So they excite me! <laughs> but you are. Yeah. Something important. Lost long ago. It's close now. So close. Hey, October 9th at 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Oh, of course, now in session for the trial of animation. And the defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution's ready to rock. <laughs> Prosecutor to Gavin. There's a defendant, uh, Eramission's condition. Acute act nine poisoning according to a physician. She could die at any time. <laughs> Thoughts her absence for the courtroom today. What? You can't put her on trial without her being here. Is unusual. You should wait for her to get better and do it then. It's so bureaucratic of them. That's being a little harsh. You can't delay the trial any longer. And there's gonna be no one left to try. <laughs> A trial is out of that can only cause grief. The records in this case, inexperience, tell us this. Apologies to the defendant, but the show must go on. Right, Vera dies, the trial will be cancelled. I'm not gonna let that happen. Mr. Wright told me everything that's been going on behind the curtain all these years. I'm gonna get Vera her innocent verdict while there's still time. Does that mean that he knows that they're siblings? Does he know everything? Like, everything? Yeah, he knows everything. Star Magician, Phoenix Wright's daughter, my sister. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does he know? He watched the videos. I mean, that's what he just said. Mr. Wright told me everything. Everything. Oh, very well. Your opening statement, Prosecutor Gavin. This past Goose's case is unchanged by recent events. Why did their motion succumb to poison? Because she could live with security of what she's done. Objection! What the fuck are you talking about, dude? <laughs> there was poison with an air queen. The exact same poison that took her father's life. What well, better confession could you ask for? Being Achilles, she would have access to the poison. Significant, since it was hard to come by. 
Mm, it is true. In other words, I see no need for further discussion. We could have had our verdict yesterday. Well, Mr. Justice, you have no objections? I see no reason to postpone a verdict. I'm just going to say she's guilty because she killed herself. It's that simple. <laughs> what? What we need to worry about is the verdict, but the trial itself. The defense holds that Vera Misham is the victim, not the killer. If that's so, then you have to prove something. She was in court, giving a testimony before us. How do you propose her killer poisoned her? Oh, and incidentally, it could be nice if you told us who her Mr. Killer was. I got this. Well, she's objection is sustained. It's defense to prove the claims to this court. Tell us how Vera Misham was poisoned. We've got two things to prove here. Who did it, and how. Which to hit first? I'm gonna go with how. How did the killer poison Vera Mitchell? I will focus first on the method used. Hmm. Any comments before we begin, Prosecutor Gavin? Not a bottle or container poison was found in the vein's body. I see. So the victim poisoning is unknown. If it's prepared to prove how the poison reached Vera Mitchell? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. What method was used to poison Vera Mitchell? Right here. What's this? Why, what a beautiful model. To give whoever designed that a hand. Is that nail polish? It's colorless. Ah. Something the matter? No, nothing. Nothing at all. So the killer put poison in this bottle and then made her drink it. As Prosecutor Gavin has told us, this is nail polish. What nail polish? It's like paint for nails. Know any women with red nails? Well, my wife has red nails. I see. So she's been painting them all this time. Uh, I, uh, let's recall yesterday's trial. Remember when Vera was testifying to the court? Of course, no back in session. Too. Vera seems pretty tense. She's practically chewing her fingernails clean off. Huh? Whenever Vera became nervous, she had a habit of biting her nails. Her nails? Ah. Prosecutor Gavin. When the prosecution had Vera examined, did they check her nails? I... well, I... A bailiff? Have them check the defendant's nails at once, Mr. Justice. Yes? Do you know who did this? Do you know who put poison in that nail polish? Yes. That bottle belongs to Vera Mitchell. Why do you ask? You know someone else who might have a bottle like this? No. Just checking. Well, Mr. Justice? You are about to accuse someone of poisoning that bottle of nail polish. He's dispensed with the chatter. You realize the weight of this accusation? Here, let me show you. Understood, Your Honor. No problem, I know what I'm doing this time. Uh, let us ask, who poisoned Vera Misham via her nail polish? This motherfucker. Uh, 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 watch this, Christoph Gavin. What's your game, my bro? There's no way he would do such a thing like that. You should know that better than anyone else. Indeed. But he's behind bars. I know. However, that doesn't mean it was impossible to do what he did. What? Ask yourselves when he put the poison in the bottle. It could have been yesterday. It could have been a, a month ago. Maybe it was a year ago. Or perhaps it was seven years ago. <laughs> Mr. Gavin had no motive for killing this poor girl. It's it's simply inconceivable. Mr. Gavin doesn't seem to think so. That face tells me one thing. Christoph Gavin's own younger brother doesn't find it inconceivable at all. Hmm. Well, Mr. Gavin, if you feel there is a clear and pressing need, then we may need to summon Christoph Gavin from jail as a special witness. Fine. I have known for some time that an impenetrable darkness lurks at the bottom of this. A darkness that has swallowed even myself. Okay. The defense's wish is granted. Let prisoner Christoph Gavin take the stand. A bailiff? Making a proceedings to call a special witness. The witness is Christoph Gavin, currently residing in solitary cell 13 at Central Prison. Here we go. Ah, Your Honor. Your Honor, how nice to see you again. Well, it's been quite a while, hasn't it? To what do I owe the pleasure of your company? It's not every day I'm summoned for my solitary cell. In fact, it's never. I think you already know, Mr. Christoph Gavin. 
Ah, Mr. Justice, I hear you've been doing quite well for yourself. Uh, why do I feel like somehow he's still my boss? Step up, Rolla Papala, you can do it! <laughs> Does this bottle look familiar? No! <laughs> oh, fuck! Nice prison clothes, yeah, really. Our Donnie Pine and Polish? Why, yes, I use it myself. As the late defendant, I hear. He's not dead yet. And? Was there something concerning this bottle you wish to ask me about? I admit I respect her for her taste in nail polish. Her taste in food. This nail polish was now Vera Misham was how Vera Misham was poisoned. That's a good nine, was it? Well, we're informed about the case, Mr. Gavin. Even solidarity. It's even solitary. Much comes from my desk. I have nothing to do but read. Well, Clavier. Maybe you can explain this. You're being accused again. By him. Again. Ah. And? You agree with this accusation, do you? Um, let's hold uh, the proper trial, shall we? Mr. Gavin, your testimony, please. I'd be delighted. The charge against you are quite severe, Mr. Gavin. The suspect of poisoning the defendant, Vera Misham. Please testify on this matter to the court. I didn't do it. <laughs> Fuck. That's airtight. <laughs> Owning the same nail polish does not make a murder. Owning the same nail polish does not a murderer make. I have been in solitary so Fuck. <laughs> I have been in solitary confinement for half a year. How could I poison her? Her father died of the same poison, the meaning of which should be clear. Rasker's case, case hold. She poisoned her father, then attempted to poison herself. Surely you aren't going to suggest I was responsible for poisoning her father, too? Well, I'm afraid the defense claim is sounding rather unlikely. Naturally. For one, I don't even know the missions. That's so, Miss Justice? Oh, very well. Miss Justice, begin cross examination. I'm accusing Christoph Gavin, my ex-boss, but I know he poisoned the missions. The question is, when could he have done it? Not to mention, why? Well, I know the lines, but I'll press anyway. Wait, why can I perceive? Oh no. Tell me, is this nail polish expensive? Aerodoni is an air polish of the highest order. Not only is it fabulously expensive, but it's made in extremely limited quantities. And you and Vera just happen to both use it. That can't be a coincidence. I'm guessing it's not a coincidence. Huh? It's simple. Aerodoni is the best nail polish one could buy, correct? Then, if one wants the best nail polish, one would buy it. Well, that makes sense. Why, it's a bit like my feelings with my brand name gavel here. And my silk top hat. Are we all done showing off our refined tastes? Oh, please continue with your tasteful testimony. <laughs> Can't you still make contact with the outside world in solitary? Ah, uh, so he had an accomplice on the outside? Is that your latest accusation? I am allowed a certain modicum of letter writing. Well, the contents of the status are closely checked. It would be extremely difficult to send a hit to Quest. That's good Kevin's on the warpath, isn't he? Yeah. You think so too, Trucy? But I don't know why. He must be nervous with Big Brother watching. That's mm, weakness I can turn my advantage. Are we cool with that? May I continue? <laughs> I love that I, this is the voice I had to pick like three weeks ago. It, it works perfectly. <laughs> the defendant is not dead yet. There are no known cases of someone surviving androquine poisoning. You seem to know a lot about androquine. I know a lot about a lot of things, which is why I suggest we pick up the pace. Or else you'll be short one defendant for what she's worth. Or do I sort of end from speaking ill of the... the... ill? My apologies. Shall I continue? Vera had no reason to want to commit suicide. And also, who would commit suicide by doing their nails? 
The answer is quite simple. Basically. Allow me to explain. Beginning with, why did she do it? The answer is quite simple. She couldn't live with her own guilt. Next, why she used nail polish to poison herself. This, too. It's simple. So she could die doing something that she liked. Something that she liked? Once she saw the trial wasn't going her way, she knew she would die. And it's not easy to bring poison to a gold room. Must I explain further? Hmm, I believe that's clear enough. Crystal clear. Wow, the two brothers together like a two-man wrecking team. It's a little more teamwork, though. We're moving in. Look! Oh my god! Look at his eyes. Look at his eyes. Jesus. The devil. <laughs> now I'll press you. It's gonna come up. Both Farrah and Mr. Mission were poisoned with androquine. That really can't be a coincidence. The defense has repeated fallacious statements based on conjecture. The prosecution requests concrete and ambiguous proof of the witness's crime. Objection sustained. Mitchell, please present concrete proof. Astrid Gavin seems strange to you, too? Like it's all grown up? That's how prosecutors are supposed to be, actually. Though he is acting different than usual. That has a lot to do with his brother, Kristoff, being in the room. Let's make this testimony count, Apollo. Right, quick and painless. Bracelet should do the trick. Okay, questioning my ex-boss. Testimony seems watertight, but he's lying. i able to see something as I focus. Is he sweating? Oh my god. He's pissed. Be the lips as he's hiding those. Oh, that's a good point. Whoops, I'll be back.
Oh well. Never mind. <laughs> I guess we just keep going. <laughs> I. <laughs> he asked me if I was willing to help my grandpa on a walk. And I went, yeah. Can you give me, like, a minute or two? Because I don't even have, like, shoes on, right? And he goes, well, he's leaving right now. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Then I'll do it and sprint after him, I guess. Right? And then he goes, no, it just stay here. I, I have to walk anyway because I'm stuck on this. He, he's currently <laughs> fucking rewiring. No, I'm not, I'm not going on a walk, comrade. I'm sorry. Um, I guess he was rewiring, uh, the room that we're trying to move Grandpa in, to. And, uh, he's like, I, I'm running into a bit of a problem, I have to think it out. i probably use a break anyway. You can stay here. I was like, okay! You sure? You know, one of those, right? But... He left. There's no point in me joining the two of them. So, hello. Staple the GPS to him. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Staple. <laughs> also, sorry, Eagle. I don't know what happens if you perceive wrong. He did move there. He saw it. Wait, his mouth? It was the glasses. Oh! I see it. What's happened with the shading on his hand? Is he breathing heavier? He's flexing his hand! He's like twitching! Gotcha. Mr. Gavin, you're nervous about something. There is that finger pointing at me so rudely. And that desperate gleam in your eyes. It's quite disturbing, actually. Perhaps because you have no faith in your own logic? Which is why you cling to your dubious power? Confident or not, I've come a long way, Mr. Gavin. There's a little more to go. I need a word. It must be somewhere. It sends shivers down his spine. So that wasn't it? Poison, it can't be a coincidence. Conjecture, okay. Oopsie. Maybe it wasn't the correct timing. And there's evidence? Well, he talks about it's this. Oh! There's a skull in his hand! <laughs> there's a goddamn skull in his hand! <laughs> it was you who killed Drew Misham. I'm bluff worthy of your new mentor, Mr. Wright. Oh, really? You see, I saw it. Right when you said her father, too. Your hand tensed unnaturally, and a little devil appeared to give me the news. 
And let's assume for the sake of argument that you... Uh, let's assume for the sake of argument. It moves five feet. No, ten feet. Do you not think my scar on my hand would just move? Sail house and move? Let's assume for the sake of argument that you saw me being tense. What does that mean? Are all tense witnesses guilty? And tell me, was Drew Misham fond of nail polish too? Sorry, but there's more than one way to poison a man. You don't need nail polish to get to someone's mouth. Ah. <laughs> then I must be very talented indeed. <laughs> you see, Drew Misham was killed on October 6th. Well, while I was already in my solitary confinement cell, it's a real person. <laughs> if that's not an alibi, then I don't know what it is. <laughs> that's the devil there, Assault? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll stop being Ben Shapiro now. But you found a way all the same. And I found it too. Ooh, that's a new one. This is how you poison Mr. Mitchell. Ah, uh, stamp. I'm sure this commemorative stamp requires no introduction. The night Mr. Misham died, he was seen writing a letter. Antiquarian was found on the stamp, Mr. Gavin. So, so am I to understand this stamp was the murder weapon? Yes, you are. Oh, and yes, this stamp was found in your prison cell. That is all, Your Honor. Order. 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 A poison on the back of that stamp. After Drew Mission was killed, someone paid a visit to his witness's cell. Phoenix Wright. Daddy? <laughs> That's when he found the stamp. You made Drew Mission write you a letter. That's how you killed him. What? My, my. You've upset my poor brother to the point of uselessness. Allow me to clarify this matter, Justice. All you need to do is recall witness Spark Bushel's testimony. Well, that's the thing, see, after you put the letter in that envelope. <laughs> Mr. Mission sat there searching his desk drawer for something, something. His desk drawer? He has a stamp, so-called postage stamp, stamp, end quote, quote. He was looking for a stamp. Ergo, he had no intention of using this stamp. What are you getting at? What I'm arriving at is that this commemorative stamp was in a frame. It was mere coincidence that he used it that night. Oh, that would seem to be the case. Or perhaps you mean it's just that I can somehow manipulate coincidence. Well, he does have a point. How would this witness know that the victim was going to use the stamp? Without that, he couldn't have planned the murder. What? Really, Gravier? You should be seeing through these weak spine bluffs by now. He's right, though. Could anyone have known Mr. Mission would use that stamp that night? He's fall, Christoph Gavin locked away in his cell. Well, seems that the defense has run out of things to say. <laughs> you assume he had something to say in the first place. I believe the defense's bluff has been called. The defense's bluff? What, the defense's bluff? I'm not sure I'll go use you there, Christoph. Clavier? Honestly, I've wanted to believe you. But defense wasn't trying to get away with the bluff. You were, Christoph. What are you saying? Brush you to Gavin. Air forehead. What was your accusation again? Uh, it was that... This poison sap killed you, Misham, yeah? To which my brother responded, firstly, There was no way to know when Misham would use the stamp. Yes, that's right. Which is why it couldn't have been planned. <laughs> Tell me. It needs to be planned. Why? Uh, why couldn't it have been a coincidence? The defense's case is simply that two mission died by that stamp. That's all. Coincidence. Christoph, you tried to slip under the accusation by changing the subject. If that's not bluffing, what is it? What are you up to, Clavier? I could ask you the same question, Christoph. <laughs> I silence the defense with the fewest words possible. It's called efficiency. Well, I'm very Mr. Gavin. That's im impermissible testimony. Very well. I should say claim head on, then. Justice? What? You accuse me of Drew Misham's murder, yes? Then, allow me to ask you. What possible reason could I have to kill a painter? Follow <laughs> motive! It's not my motive! Hmm, indeed. I want to see how an attorney could come to want to kill a painter. I hear something. 
Why did he bring up the motor from the very beginning? Unless he was afraid it was a battle he might lose. So what does it mean? It means that there might be a weak spot. We may have some evidence to prove a motive. A motive for murder? Which is vital. Not the most vital element in this case. Please consider this when making your statement. I say it's about is this vital. That's pretty vital. Why do we have this, like, health bar present on every screen in this courtroom? That... Can we... Can we get rid of this system when we bring in the jury? I don't I don't need to see how, like, up a creek without a, without a fucking paddle I am, man. Get him out of here! <laughs> well, Mr. Justice... <laughs> you this no matter what. I said, Your Honor, we present evidence. I didn't to see what you have for us. What reason did Christoph Gavin ever went into murder through his room? Uh, I want to read it. Address on here. Name I've never heard of. At least, I think so. It's too blurry to read. Really? I wanted to read the note again. Let's do the forging. Let's go for that. Christoph Gavin's motive becomes clear when we consider why the stamp came to Drew Misham Studio in the first place. Or why was that? Forgery, Your Honor. Go back seven years. Drew Misham accepts his first job creating forged evidence. I, I've seen that before. A page from a diary, wasn't it? Magnifique Gravier's diary. Ah, uh, when a Tony Fix right lost his badge. Yes. This was the evidence he presented to his loss. This evidence is a fake. Yes. But did Mr. Wright request the forgery to be made? That was never proven. This is a defense attorney on that case of Phoenix Wright. Who, as is it him, drunk with the prospect of victory, could have done it? And why would they? Just out of curiosity. Do you remember this letter? This is the first page. And this is the second. I noticed we presented in court yesterday. This letter was sent to a mission by the client who requested that forgery. The enclosed stamp was none other than the poisoned commemorative stamp. Drew Misham drew his last breath just the other day. However, the motive for his murder was already seven years old. Seven years old. The client who requested this forgery was very cautious. He tried to erase anything, and anyone, with connections to a forgery. Oh, to keep them from talking. But he made a mistake. Stint was a picture of my favorite magician, so I kept it. Kept. Father took me when I was very young. It was a great magic show. I loved it so much. But... The killer's time bomb was delayed. The poison stamp was sealed within a glass frame where it was sat for seven whole years. Hey, forehead. Do you understand what you're telling us? The one who schemed out the forged diary page was the one who poisoned the stamp. And it was Phoenix Wright who presented the forged evidence seven years ago, adding the two statements together. The one who schemed to kill Drew Misham was none other than Phoenix Wright. Sorry, but that's not how this is going to go down. Oh, said how will it go down? I checked through the records on that case when I found this. Seven years ago, just before the trial began. Oh, oh boy, boy. Um, uh, here, here. What's this? Then? I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. Here, here. And one. Oh, and one more thing. I'm sorry to respond this one, you're so suddenly so much. You see, the final summary is turning only yesterday, yes? I understand that I'm asking the impossible of you. Yes, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet, and all we did was play cards, of And that was enough, no. Phoenix Wright was put on the case the day before the trial started. He didn't have time to request a forgery. The day before? Now, here's a question. Just who was Shady Young Minmar's previous defense attorney? No, this, this can't tell me. But it is all true. There was another man, a defense attorney with a badge on his collar. 
It was you, Kristoff Gavin. Order, order, order. What is the meaning of this? Witness? I mean, I mean, defendant, I'm a former lawyer. Uh, let me begin by denying this. Objection! It's easy enough to look up, Mr. Gavin. And impossible to prove if you can't. Attorneys are registered with the court today before the trial begins. In other words, no record remains in the court. How exactly do you intend to prove Phoenix Wright's claim? Hmm, that would be difficult. I'm afraid this line of inquiry won't yield. Through a hill. Oh, at least one more <laughs> for the other child. Yeah, go ahead. Are you sure you don't have evidence? What's wrong with Prosecutor Gavin? He looks clammy. Evidence! Evidence that shows this man, Christoph Gavin, requested that photo seven years ago. Clavier. Just prove it. Clear up those doubts now, or I swear I'm off this case. You must have thought of some evidence, Apollo. Your Gavin looks like he's in physical pain. The darkness. I have to pull the darkness out of him, and proof is the only way I can. What proof do Gavin's link to Drew Mitchell? Well, Mr. Justice, you claim Christoph Gavin quest to forgery of Drew Mitchell seven years ago. Prove it. It can be proven. It's simply ridiculous. Why, even this hazard, this evidence does not- Are you, are you telling the truth, Apollo Justice? I am. Then, then I say we give him the benefit of the doubt. Well, very well, but if you're wrong about this, be prepared for a penalty. Oh no. Your Honor, you do the defense and injustice. Mr. Justice is clearly passionate about his claim. Shall the penalty not match his passion? Oh! I, I haven't given a penalty like that in a long time. Well, Mr. Justice? Fine, Your Honor. All I have to do is prove any kind of a link. Something that ties Christoph Gavin to Drew And I have something that clearly does the job. Uh, uh, we do, apparently. Uh, Mr. Dustin, that's your evidence. Shows the link between our windows and Drew Misham. Oh, uh, fuck. I got this. We don't need to save. It's not the nail polish. Surely it's the mail. Yeah, that's Link. Yeah, they're linked. It's, it's the mail. The fucking mail. It's easy. It's the mail. This evidence proves that there's a link in here. Just for Nemo. I'll save after I did the hard part. There you go. Is that, is that, is that good? <laughs> is that a scrap of paper? I'm afraid I can let you submit that. Is there some problem? There is. How could you possibly have that? You couldn't. Hmm. Hey. That's Daddy's handwriting. Mr. Wright's handwriting? What is the meaning of this? I see now. Yes, of course. What do you mean, of course? I just remembered I had a visitor yesterday. Phoenix Wright came to my cell, but I wasn't there. Phoenix Wright. When I returned, I saw he had something of mine in possession. Of course, I had no intention of letting him get away with reading my private mail. A uh, mail? You mean this letter was in your cell? No. However, it appears Mr. Wright is yet to be cured of his bad forging habit. Well, if it's a forgery, it's not a very good one. Handwriting's terrible. This is Mr. Wright's reproduction of what was written in the real letter. A reproduction? When Mr. Wright visited Cri Christoph Gavin's cell, he brought with him a small video camera. A what? A what? <laughs> he recorded his entire conversation with you, Mr. Gavin. And the contents of your personal mail. But regardless, this mockery of piece of evidence will never be accepted by the court. Evidence based on a video, a man with no authority whatsoever claims he took, a man who happens to be an ex attorney suspended of forgery. Mm. Prosecutor Gavin? Uh, prosecutor Gavin? Yeah. As embarrassing as this is for me to say, I'm afraid my brother is incapable of making rational judgments at the moment. Your Honor? Your decision, please. Well, the defense's claim is denied. What? Only actual evidence is permitted in the court of law. Please remove your defense's evidence from the record. Better luck next time, Justice.
Well, we've certainly taken a detour from our cross-examination, but the defense appears to be lacking proof. I'm forced to end the cross-examination of Christoph Gavin at this point. Paulo, do something. I'm thinking, but without evidence. I don't have anything I can use on him. Very well. Send a special witness cross-examination. Show's over. Yet the crowd screams for more. Only now do I understand why. I must go to Gavin. Frankly, I'm relieved. This has been bothering me for seven whole years, and I'm tired as a whole useful angst scene. Now's our chance. Let's clean out the family claws today, Christoph. Javier, you're spinning out of control. Calm yourself if there's anything you'll regret. Spinning out of whose control? Mine or yours? Take a moment to consider everything you've built. Your reputation as a prosecutor, your fame with the masses. You could lose it all, Clavier. Apollo, did you see that? He's trying to press Prosecutor Gavin. Prosecutor Gavin, try to remember. What's really important to you? You amuse me here for it. I couldn't forget what's really important to me, even if I tried. In fact, I haven't. Not even once. Seven years ago, <laughs> I put on some sunglasses. <laughs> finally, finally. You just couldn't resist, could you? Could you? Yeah, right, right. Resist what? Presenting solid evidence? I don't know. Might have a question if it's him any strong hold. Prosecution would like to claim a new witness with us. Search your name and occupation for the record. I'm familiar with the trial. I've watched the video several times. Did you find anything unnatural about it? Uh, unnatural? No, it did seem unusually well prepared. I mean, Mr. Wright had only just presented his evidence. And the next moment, you call him Drew Mitchell. It was almost as if... Almost as if... What? That's where he wore glasses. Funny, it didn't even occur to me to wonder. But now that I do, I see there's only one possible explanation. Almost as if, from the very beginning, you knew Mr. Wright was going to present that evidence. Yeah. Correct. I knew that if I applied the usual pressure, Phoenix Wright would eventually come up with that forged diary page. Don't do this, Clavier. I know because you told me, Christoph. What? What? Yeah, no shit. <laughs> it was the night before the trial. Clavier. Christoph? I'll see you at the prosecutor's office day before trial. Ah, I wouldn't be appearing at the trial, actually, actually. Oh, why not? Oh, I wouldn't be facing off with you on your first trial, apparently, apparently. What's in exchange? I bought information. Oh. The attorney who will be there in my place tomorrow is not to be trusted, but don't even give him the benefit of the respect. Listen, listen. I want you to call in a special witness. witness. Then? I need to sleep. Bye. <laughs> Good night, Nemo. What about that at the time? How did Grishop know so much? Prosecutor Gavin. Christoph. We are supposed to face each other in that trial. A fair fight. Price is about Deserves that much. You let me borrow the victim's belongings. You show me all your research on the case. The victim's belongings? Would have included my nephew's diary, weren't it? Honey, <laughs> no. She got left in here and she's not happy. I'm Mr. Gavin. Why, my Clavier, you disappoint me. You find trees, yet miss the forest. You're the one missing the forest, Mr. Gavin. You can't switch it onto the rug. Nonsense anymore. Tell me what's going on behind that trial. Yeah, my dad's working with electric wires. She doesn't need to be in the room. <laughs> Why not? I achieved what I came here to do. I see no harm in reminiscing. Apollo. I think we're finally gonna shine the black belly of this thing, Drew. Done everything we could. 
It was enough. Seven years ago, the day before the trial, I visited the detention center at the request of my client, Zach Grammaire. One card. One card. Showdown time. No. You lose, Gavin. Thanks for the work. Now go. Now, to be honest, I don't know what his reasons were to this day. So as you could tell, he dismissed me as his representation because I lost in a game of poker. I can come to no other conclusion. Can he say something? If you want to know a man, you have to compete. Zach wasn't matching his points. Cards. He's watching the man behind the cards, Christoph Gavin. He <laughs> tell this because he lost at poker. No, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I lost poker, so I decided to flush down everyone's careers down the toilet. I'm a serious gambler. No, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Phoenix Ryan, a second rate attorney who relies on luck and bluffs. Dismissed me with that pitiful excuse for a man. He deserves to die for that error alone. Hold it. So, the one who requested that forgery was. Oh, I'm not admitting to anything. My point is, these two men shamed me, and I could not forgive that. Phoenix Wright and Zach Romare both deserve what they got. So, when you ask Mr. Mission to forge. He, it really is just ego. He did it because of ego. Oh my. Yes, Mr. Mission forged that evidence? So he could win? But then. When you were dismissed as Zach Ramirez's attorney, you used your forged evidence as a trap. You fed me information about the forgery you made, as you gave your dirty evidence to him. You're free to imagine what you will. Then it was because he lost at poker. No, it's not because he lost. It's because he is no longer the attorney. He's like, oh, my ego. My point is that all I had imagined came to pass. Everything went perfectly. <laughs> Incredible. If I wasn't laughing, I'd weep. A prosecutor, Gavin? Perfectly. Your mind's cast off. Stop fooling yourself. What are you talking about, Clavier? Tell me, how did that trial end? Oh, cancelled. When the defendant vanished. Ah, I get it. Christoph, you've been living in a fear for seven years. What? You were afraid your forgery would be revealed and your reputation trashed. You couldn't leave things to chance. So you watched everyone evolve with the case for seven years. No, he always felt like he was being watched. Huh? That's what he said every day for seven years. <laughs> but I felt it too. Journalist Sharon is being watched and quote unquote. You don't wonder why Zach Romero got rubbed out after seven years. Right after coming into contact with me, me. What rage just a minute. Zach Romero was seen by this reporter. How is that possible? Was he alive after being gone seven years? Finally. I knew this moment was coming. I just didn't think we'd get here so fast. Zach Romer, gone missing for seven years. Lucy's father. What's wrong, Apollo? Go get him. Right. Leave it to me. Allow me to refresh the court's memory. Six months ago, Christoph Gavin was charged with murdering a mysterious traveler. I remember that well. Shady Smith, was it? Poisoned into a Chinese restaurant. Tragic. The, the details don't really matter right now. But what matters is that traveler was Zach Grammaire. What is it, Apollo? Uh. Keep going. We'll talk about it later. But, 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 did she already know? <laughs> no, don't. No, oh, Trucy. She already knew. It's over. Uh, yeah, that's my dad. So please explain this. Justice, can you explain this? It all started seven years ago. The great magician, Magnifique Grimaire's death, started it. Magnifique Grimaire's death and his student, Zach Grimaire, the suspect. Whoever, def whoever defended Zach in court successfully would be famous beyond belief. Thinking that, Christoph Gavin did the unthinkable. He forged evidence. Rumishroom? Actually, it was his daughter, Vera, who really did the work. You took precautions when you had that forgery made, didn't you, Mr. Gavin? No precautions. 
keep people from talking, of course. These two know too much. Leave them alive and they'll do nothing but trouble, trouble. That's when you planned your poisoning of the foragers. Answer Queen applied to a commemorative stamp. But luck was on Mr. Misham's side. The bomb didn't go off. Your daughter? She saved him by taking the stamp? I see. But that wasn't the only bomb he set up. To Andrew Donnie Nail Pod, of course. You notice something when you're requesting that for him during? When Vera Misham is nervous, she has a bad habit. A tendency to bite her nails. Ah, that nail polish was her good luck charm. Sorry, I had to move my dog. Trucy has the power. She was almost kidnapped once. Since then, she's been, well, you see for yourself. She refuses to leave the house, huh? Person gave me a good luck charm when I absolutely had to go outside. Or text me. me. Where's the band? Maybe she's received something, something, a gift. gift. She won't tell me what it was. It was from that client. I wonder what that note made. Right? It was his insurance. Her insurance? As long as she lived quietly at home, there was no danger to her. But what if she had to go outside? If she ran into any trouble, she'd become nervous. And today, our partners would do the rest. His time bomb sat there for seven years, and then they went off almost simultaneously. If you're finished, may I return to my cell now? I'm not accustomed to standing for such long periods of time. Mr. Kevin, have you heard a single thing we've said? No, I listened quite closely to your little tale. Quite an entertaining piece of fiction. What? Oh, Kyvia, surely you understand. We're back to the evidence. The lacking evidence. Nothing pulls a link between him and the Aquafine that Miss took Drew Misham's life. What about the restaurant? You killed Zach Grimaire to keep him from talking. I killed no man of that name. I read over the report again, if you like. Read over the report again. The victim was traveler by the name of Shady Smith, about whom we know little else. We can't seriously think I knew he was part of that partic that he was that particular fugitive. Okay, then why did you kill him? I plead my right to remain silent. Remember, this court did not convene to put me on trial. Defendant's name is Vera Mitchell, suspected in the murder of Arthur. wants to go bother somebody who's, like, hands deep into electric wires. That's not happening. Poor little girl. My trial's been finished for six months now. Hmm. I'm afraid we have strayed considerably far from our purpose here. The court concurs with the witness. It is defendant Vera Mission who's on trial here. No, but you were doing so well, Apollo. As long as there's no evidence to support the accusation against him, this course of inquiry cannot find very misinterpreted. Your Honor, Phoenix Wright sent seven years collecting this evidence. Um, you still don't get it, do you? And just assume there was poison in the nail polish. Who then was responsible for causing very mission to bite her nails? What? It wasn't me. I know that much. The one who brought that poison to her lips it was you. That's not how, that's not how murder works. That's, that's not how murder works. Kristoff. Kristoff, that's not how, Apollo's never going to fall for that, Chris. Kristoff, that's not how murder works. What? What? No, I didn't. Oh my God, I'm a murderer. Evidence is everything. There is nothing more. That's not how murder works. I believe this discussion has reached its conclusion. Apollo's a murderer. Y Your Honor. Oh, Mr. Justice. You have performed admirably well for a novice journey. I respect your partner. Phoenix Wright's determination as well. Oh, however, without direct proof, you have nothing. Isn't that right, Clavier? Unfortunately. Yes, Christoph. You're right. That is, you would have been right until now.
What? What? Oh, did you know that we should ask Tyler Terry? To eyes the nation on the courtroom today. This is the trial case for a new judicial system. That's right. I totally forgotten. The jurist system. A, a jurists, you say? Um, the current judicial system has been deemed too closed off from society. This new system attempts to inject the wisdom of common citizens into the law. Common citizens? Wisdom? Is this some kind of joke? Does that brother hate that other brother? No, he just likes justice. And I mean, this guy, like, cheated. I mean, we presented proof. But it's a lot of, like, non-legal hearsay. Which is why it being the jury <laughs> is quite the reveal now. Yeah, by the way, this is this was a this was testing a jury. Using a jury instead of the judge. What could we possibly gain by doing this? Entrusting our judicial system to a mindless, emotional mob of rational mouth breathers? A common sense is something called common sense. Common sense is not restricted by the law. Nonsense. There's only room for two in this court. Me and the law. <laughs> Keep the riff raff out. Out, I say. Holy shit. Not <laughs> in the court, actually. They're watching everything by video camera. Oh, hi, guys. They're looking at me. Hello. <laughs> How can you allow this? Incidentally, the, the one responsible for making this happen was Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright? <laughs> so, everything was leading to this. <laughs> of course. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> oh my god. Oh my. I won't accept. I can't accept. This is no court. The law. The law is everything. Law is absolute. You let ignorant swine so you your courts. Pissed off. It's over. Clever. The law is absolute. You can't be serious. What? Odd. I thought you spent your life looking for loopholes. The law isn't absolute. It's filled with contradictions. Oh, the law is the end product of many years of history. The fruit of human knowledge. Like a gem, hardest to gleam through trials and errors. Is this fruit we receive and pass on, in face in our time? And it's always changing, growing, nurturing is our task as human beings. Except for you, Kristoff. You are changing. You stopped. You're not needed anymore. I couldn't think of anything to say. Maybe because I still haven't seen enough. But someday, I'll know what law is. And I'll fight to change it if I have to. I see no need to further prolong this trial. This began as a trial of Vera Mission, case of murdering a father. The painter, Drew Mission. However, several other incidents were reviewed. And we seem to have reached a conclusion. Before this court declares a verdict, I await your decision, jurists of the court. For the death of true mission, how do you find that event very mission? Innocent? Or guilty? Text your result to this number now. 1-800-885-5547. Please don't actually text that number. And we'll show the results live. We'll be back after this. Uh, respond to the message. <laughs> I've turned her down because this matter. Option one. She's guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Just all caps. She's guilty. <laughs> The jurist chambers. A sense trial for the case. Only the verdict remains to be decided. The Vera mission is currently in intensive care. If a decision can be reached today, it may never be reached. The factors involved are simple. Did the defendant poison her father that night? 
If so, she is guilty. Or was there another reason for Mr. Misham's death? Did another person poison him? If so, she is innocent. A panel has been provided for each of you to input your decisions. That is all. Please, wait. Yes, jurist number six. There's something in the jurist handbook here. Persons involved with the case may not be jurists. That is correct. I've looked into all of your dossiers. None of you are involved with the development of the case. With the development of the case? I see. Does that answer your concern? It's time for your verdict. Make a decision in the case against Vera Misham. After seven years, the truth is ready to be heard. Welcome to the Phoenix Wright channel. <laughs> bap, 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 bap. <laughs> bap, 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 bap. Judge wisely. Judge well. Oh! What? <laughs> Wait, why do I get to make the choice? That's so weird! <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catcher, tiger, by the toe. Mo. Can you save and choose guilty? No! No, I definitively cannot. Also, this lady's blind. Anyway. <laughs> Choose both. Oh my... No, ma'am! You've broken the system! So on... A verdict was reached on October 9th, 2.14 p.m. First verdict under the jurist system. Innocent by unanimous decision. The record will show and that when the verdict was announced, special witness Crystal Cavan laughed. A laugh louder than any ever heard before. Or since. A laugh that echoed the halls of justice, lingering for what seemed like hours. October 10th, 8.30 a.m., the morning after the trial, in intensive care ward, a true miracle occurred. Vera Misham opened her eyes. No. Vera, I'm so glad I... Don't cry, Apollo. I'm happy, too. And proud. You did well, Apollo. I thought about it. What if Vera... I... Hey, hey, don't you start crying, too. Um, sorry to see us like this. Oh, she smiled. Avera? Thank you so much, Apollo. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have pressed you like that. If... If I hadn't, you never would have been, been your nails. No, I was wrong. Staying locked inside like that, clinging to my good luck charm. Farrah. I opened my eyes and saw you, and finally understood. It's important to be part of the world. See things with your own eyes. I hope they date. <laughs> okay, Mikey. <laughs> Looks like that poison had some effect after all. Build off whatever was holding Vera back from life. I knew you'd pull through Vera. I mean, that's what Apollo was fighting for the whole time. Your future. Don't forget it. Here, let me thank you. Uh, no, it's okay. Look, it's me. I love it. Thanks. Is that me? She really captured your essence, Apollo. Well, I think so, at least. That reminds me. Do you know where the other lawyer is? The other lawyer? Oh, you mean Daddy. Except he's not a lawyer anymore. It's my fault, isn't it? I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 Oh, it's okay. I'm through looking away from the things I've done. Hope I can look them in the eyes again someday and apologize. I'm sure you'd be happy to hear that. He brought us all those things for me when he came to visit earlier. 
mean the stack of videos? Is right finished watching them all? You know, I knew my real daddy was alive. Oh, I was there seven years ago, remember? I was the one who helped him vanish from the courtroom. You did what? How? I'm not telling. You promised me that day when you went away. Alright, we've been on meet again for some time, Chosie. But know this, I will be watching, and one day I shall return. You're the next grammar after all. Hey, <laughs> Eddie. Yeah. Chosie, man, he couldn't keep that promise, could he? It's okay. Phoenix, my daddy now. And we can't really play the piano. That he can't. Oh, and I got you too. Even if your voice is kind of loud sometimes. Glad I made your list. Come to think of it, where is Daddy? The one who can't play. You know, Apollo? Do you know Apollo? I think he said he had to meet someone. Hmm, I wonder. Maybe it's new mommy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Trucy? Hmm? Yes, Sparrow? I only have one voice. I was wondering, could you show him to me once more? Sir Hat, was it? Oh, he's not been knighted yet. Here goes. Do us an impersonation, Mr. Hat. Oh, her arm does move. Objection. <laughs> not loud enough. And I like Mr. Magic underwear better anyway. That's magic panties, Apollo. I hated, I hated that fucking... I, ha I hate that fucking ability. So your memories returned. You still right? Is this about your plan, too? I don't know what you're talking about. When I lost my memory, I was reborn as Lamoir. But you knew my true identity, did you not? That's why you chose me as one of your jurists. Now you're thinking into it too much. Besides, there's no guarantee that regaining your memory would make you happy. Of course it is a happy thing. For so long, I thought I was alone. But now I know I have children. Two dear children. I'm so proud of them. This, too, I think, is thanks to you. Are you gonna tell them? They do not know? No. They don't know their mother. They don't even know their siblings. I will go to them when the time is right. Until then, I... Don't worry. I'll take care of them for you. They're... They're very important to me, too. A little annoying at times, but still. I have to keep an eye on her, at least. Because I'm the only one who knows she really feels on the inside. Your bracelet. Yes? I've seen a lot of mysterious things these past seven years, but your bracelets were the strangest of all. Really? Stranger than the person who can contact and talk to ghosts. A conductive bracelet that sh metal shrinks when it's cold, Phoenix. That's impressive to you? Compared to... Hey, I remember him. I remember meeting him half a year ago now, just like Gavin's office. And then I met you. Two fates destined to intertwine. I was there when they crossed. Never forget that. A small thing that broke, yet it tore who I was away. I gotta say that these poses go hard though. Like, pr print out this whole scene. It looks looks fucking rad. Anyway. Ten years ago, during a simple rehearsal, it's a miracle no one died. But I... I didn't survive that accident. That's why I left the troop. My family. Now, my memory is returned. I am myself once more. For the first time, I am glad to be alive, Mr. Wright. Now, speaking of miracles, your mission regain consciousness this morning. I can only hope she's as glad as you are. It is a strange thing, Fate. Is rad the short term of form of radical? I suppose, yes. Strange thing, Fate. Sometimes a life is taken, sometimes a life is spared. You know what I've been thinking? People don't die that easily, really. As long as they've got something worth living for. It's short for Radgrid. It's pretty much the end of my story, for now, anyway. I've still got a long way to go, and this power of mine, well, it needs some work. But, just no, there's hope now. We lost it, but somehow we found it again. That's why people are smiling again. Hope. 
Yeah, I don't think I'm with this lawyer thing for a while. Oops. <laughs> Training time. Gotta go. Cords of steel. Here comes Chester. Objection! After playing all these games, <laughs> I'm glad you're staying with the agency, Apollo. It's like, like I found my long lost big little brother. Oh, and don't you worry about the troop grammar. Trucy's on the case. Now that I have this, thanks to Danny. I played the mid cool. Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I I have to admit, playing Phoenix seems interesting in that game, even though apparently he's garbage. It's not as every day you get to try as it rocks hard as a one of our gigs, yeah? That's why it's over. Scavenging is a baking up. Those costs of one of them tissues at supermarkets nationwide. <laughs> Oh my god, really? You're the real stars now. I look forward to our next jam session. Well, it's finally over. You know, thinking about it. I've been a piano player longer than I was a lawyer. Now that everything's sorted and I've got time on my hands, maybe I'll take some lessons. Maybe I'll take the bar exam. Again. Real laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was standing around eating snackers the other day. When I got this crazy idea. What if they were golden? You could augment the crunch, but make them ding? By the power of science, the preservatives might not be 100% safe. Why is she still at this crime scene? Why is she still at that... What? One for my current collection. An unlikely event you are renting mercy and fees. Come to Borscht Boat Club. Only thing called the restaurant is Borscht. Ah, but a greater challenge of being required. Then come to the hideout. You know who to ask for. Hello over again? Oh, I'm sorry. Hope you're alright. Give myself a little. That's no good. It's one programmer? What? Oh, there we go. I was like, what the fuck? Oh god. So, Kentucky Pastry's getting back to Eastern Roots, spread the culture and all. Yo boss, culture time! <laughs> Go for it! This is how we write the root, capiche? But we're still about giving back to the people. Yo boss, PR time! And this is how we write people, all right? Now that walk you paying attention, oh, kids. <laughs> Bizarrely, Chinese characters on cake was a flying idea 3,000 years ago. Believe that. Man, you wanna make it today? You gotta keep it real, you know what I'm saying? Yo, that's why I made the OG cracker. For real. I know it don't look no cracker. Gee, what, you want me to call it the OG muffin? I don't know where all this talk about food's coming from. You ask me, there's only one food, and that's noodles. Noodles forever. Got a new one too. See, this time I just put a big chunk of salt in the bowl. <laughs> Why pretend? All those news are all about the salt. Salt forever.
Are we gonna go through every single character that wasn't a murderer? Yes. <laughs> my exceptionally inquisitive nature has won me unequivocal adoration in my department. You see, they used to call me Wesley Stinkler and Wes Wesley Stinky Hens. But no longer. I have a new name, one that reflects my true academic nature. Wesley Stecko, reporting for Dune. Yes, curiosity is a sickness, and I am the cure. If you hear any honking, that's winning. Perhaps you don't, perhaps you do. Maybe when I'm talking. Oh, she just finished. Nope. Wait. A honker. Yeah, that's her. I don't know who to thank you for all you've done. Light has returned to my life, and with it, joy. I may have lost years, but I have gained a treasure. Two treasures, in fact. I will think, think of them when I write my next song. Yes, honking. She's doing it again. What did you do? I think she got excited. Hold on, let me try to pick her up. Come here. Okay, she stopped. <laughs> brushel, brushel, brushel. Brushel, brushel, brushel. Brushel here. Back on the beat with another interview. <laughs> How do I feel about things turned out? Why am I in jail? No scoop yet, but journalist confidence in mint condition. <laughs> End quote. Is he in jail? <laughs> I've decided to keep painting. Originals only, of course. I suppose I'll have to see a bit of the world outside of what, what to find what to paint. But I know where there are good people out there now. I've met them. Why, why is your outline of your dad still on the floor? You should probably clean it. The door is open. The world is waiting. Thank you. Pet Winnie, I'm trying. Congratulations! You unlock a special bonus in the music and background setting screen. Commemorative. Okay. The next game, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. Not yet. Well, there you go. I think I like this game now, it was nice. Yeah, it, it took a while to get there. But once it was like, oh, by the way, everything was connected. It, it kind of won me over. I'm not going to admit, I'm, I'm going to admit. Like, there was no, like, just wasting time case. All of the cases were connected. The OG3 were better. Ah, oh, me too. Actually, I say that. Was the second one connected? <laughs> Was the second one connected at all? Hold on. I need to remember. <laughs> No. No, it was not. The second one was the, was the was the no connection. But still, it's fine. What a show, indeed. Can we try this one game? This one just yesterday. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant the, the noodle cart, Mikey. I, I'm not gonna play Infinite Craft now. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I kind of beat up my throat.
I'm curious, hold on. Wait, hold on, back up. Set music slash background. Oh, wow. You can change to any of these. Trilogy exclusive. Well, I am curious. Apollo gave that in himself. Is he, is he going to be a lawyer? There we go. Oh. Please raid video vomit. It's what you want. You just come in here and make a request of me. Okay. Orchestral arrangements. Oh. Interesting. Oh my gosh. There, it's over. So put the end song. Anyway. Uh, we will not be playing this tomorrow or next week. I think we'll go at it come the 26th. Wait, no. Today's Thursday. Why do I think it was Wednesday? Yeah, okay, of course we're not streaming tomorrow. <laughs> uh, come at it back to, like, the 25th. We're not playing anything tomorrow. Stop! <laughs> My dog's, like, freaking out. Okay, look. I have to leave. I don't know who this is. Uh, to my understanding, uh, this guy is Gongo. So enjoy, like, random content. There you go, comrade. Are you happy? I'm, I'm like, doing good streamer stuff. Boom. Boom. Yeah, there you go. Do that. that <laughs> 